put on my fans, I know I've let you down. Um, what I should have done, I didn't do. And I know you're all very disappointed in me. I shouldn't have had the, the cake didn't even come out of the Tupperware box. And I am, I am, I am, I am, I understand your disappointment, but all I can do is apologize and move on. I've paid the fine. Um, and I'm sorry for not recording properly, but the Metropolitan Police have dealt with it and I'm here now. Good evening. <laughs> you stupid twat. <laughs> it was beautiful. I'm crying. <laughs> <laughs> also, I'm just kind of curious what's that? The cake didn't come out of the box could be a euphemism for. <laughs> That's the Boris's thing, wasn't it? It's a great euphemism. The cake didn't <laughs> even come out of the box. That's uh, we do that can, that car, can mean a lot we? of things, Matt. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> can I just say, that fucking Boris news, right, broke legitimately three seconds before I went live the other day and I got to start stream with breaking news and it was true. <laughs> It was very exciting. Oh, very exciting. Congratulations. Thank you. I, I was streaming out on Ring and lots of people told me uh, uh, Gilbert Gottfried had died. And I was like, don't tell me that. You're really bringing me down. <laughs> I really like Gilbert Gottfried. Well, well wait to bring to down the breaking the news if you're not the one breaking the news. Well, I was breaking the news. The I, feel like that's, I feel like that's when you say this just in. Like, I think breaking news is reserved for the person who's actually breaking the news. Nah, I, think I think you are a breaking news thief. I think breaking you, news you is gone. You didn't discover that. You're not the first person to report Neither it. Neither all the other news sites. Yeah, the, one fucking news site reported. Everyone else like breaking news. They don't fucking get on my tits about. Yeah, what breaking fuck. breaking news means nothing these days. I mean, it's like breaking news. It's a bit clammy. You know, oh, I think if like someone's clammy, reporting, yeah. someone's reporting it after someone else put it, they're not breaking the news. They're just they're just reporting it pretty early. Like it's not breaking. It's just like cracking. Well, there should be a feel, new term. There's like well, less. Okay, feel free to like, feel free like moderate, to bring this moderately, up with every news moderately outlet. cracked news. Uh, breaking Mod news. John's just decided we shouldn't use breaking news if we aren't the ones that uh, break the news. What did I just say? Actually, wait, no. That's no, I'm fair. right. No, yeah. and you did the thing. I wrote no, it. That's fair. And now, but if Matt went out to repeat it, he would have to be using. He'd have to say moderately cracked news. Moderately cracked news. John's a wanker. No, that's not nope, that's oh. much no, that's, the Daily that's Mail. Old, that's old <laughs> news. That's been true for decades. Yeah. There's the Daily Mail. Tie it to Hitler or Diana and you'll be, you'll be laughing. <laughs> Welcome back to the podcast, everybody, which wasn't here last week because Matt can't use fucking recording software. Oh, no, there's actually Mom, two Mom. reasons it wasn't here. My, my recording corrupted and then we were going to re-record it, but Daniel died seven times in a row. So, right, here's the thing. <laughs> I want to point out that we did record a really good episode. Lots of good sterling debate. Like it was just two and a half hours of Elden Ring. It was. That was it. Yeah, it was great. Uh, and Matt didn't record his audio because I think he's because he was wrong. Because he I doesn't like Elden my audio. Ring. It just fucking corrupted. Thank you very much. Well, here's the thing, right? You were actually in my house and I was like, Matt, sit next to me because I've got like a room mic because I always like how they sound. And you were like, no, no, it sounds better if I record it on my Mac. Well, yeah, because we because weirdly, out of now, these, out of, the, eight, out of the seven podcasts, well, that we, out of the six we've done, that was the third I had recorded in your house, bizarrely. <laughs> <laughs> We've only done six of these fucking things. Yeah, we oh, right? since, since we restarted. Since we restarted, I thought yeah. in total I was like, Jesus but Christ, like, these the are scarred. One we recorded on that mic, and you know what? It sounds like shit because you're much louder than me. <laughs> well, then talk louder. And I can't balance it. And there's another one I recorded in your house on my computer, and it sounds better because I can balance the audio. So we just did that again. Yeah, but Matt, it, right? I know, here's it's the thing. Way, yeah. It's it died. Yeah, no, it died. Mm -hmm. It went because away. it objected to how wrong your opinions were. <laughs> yes, because I had incorrect. I had. I had. Um, you had incorrect views. I had second apology. opinions about the Elden Ring. Second apology. Now apologise to Elden Ring. Nah. Wow. That's a dick. Well, the way technically I did stream it. <laughs> technically. Yeah, yeah. Well, you played it, and I spoke for two or three hours. Oh shit! Yeah, I. Hey, when I was. <laughs> I, hey, I, I was really just spoke. <laughs> I've basically been sick since we recorded the last one. No, he's not joking. Le got Legitimately, right, we recorded the last one. Dad was like, what way? And the next day, he lost his fucking That's voice. excellent Dan impression. Yeah, <laughs> <I think. laughs> next day, he lost his voice. And then after he lost his voice, he died three times. And now he's here. Hi. Matt watched me faint. That yeah, it was scary. actually quite, It was actually quite distressing. <laughs> 
I, I did the first thing you think out. is, oh, fuck, where's my next paycheck coming from? <laughs> I pay myself. <laughs> yeah. Rebecca makes all the fucking money. We all... <laughs> John will never give money. me a job. He only hires competent people who knows how recording software works. Yeah. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> Yeah, I uh, yeah, I did. Uh, I've told the story a few times now. I'll do the the bridge version of it. Um, oh no, I so, want the full version. Like it sounds like it's dramatic. I want it dramaed up. It is actually oh, very dramatic. dramatic. <laughs> yeah, I, I want it's I want not... a dramatic reading of how you died three times. All right, so and I'd also like you know a, a proper like each, each time you died to be followed by that was the first time I died. You okay. know, I, I want this proper video game intro sequence. Okay. Um, this story was made by a team of multicultural people <laughs> with various beliefs and faiths and skin colours. All of which were sexually abused by Ubisoft senior executives. <laughs> <laughs> All it's of only which me. were personally touched by Yves Kilmer. <laughs> <laughs> Show me on the really nice model of an Assassin's Creed character where Yves Gilmont touched you. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> cut, 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 cut. Um, <laughs> Oh dear. Uh, so, so um, first off, I just I was just sick, just got sick, just got. Uh, I thought I had a little cold, and then it didn't go away, and I went to hospital, and they said I had two separate Sorry, infections. Sorry, no, can we can we just roll it back slightly? Because it's an important detail you're missing there. Oh, hang on, wait. Previously on this story, go ahead. No, it's the important detail of Daniel being sick for a week, and then on a f- fucking Friday evening, being to me and Rebecca. I think I need to speak to a dong. <laughs> Yeah. I, I didn't catch that, but I thought I heard the word dong in there. Yeah. What I went think, wrong with Dan's dong? I think I need to speak to a, do- a Friday night. <laughs> fell off. Whole thing, it fell off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really a load of faff, and it turned out you were dying from seven conditions at once. It was two. I had two. I had a sinus infection and my and a dong was infection. On- Dong I, make, I would like to make a point, by the way. I had diagnosed you correctly, fun fact, <laughs> prior. Yeah, well done. Good for you. Look at You're me. You're a doctor now. Yay. With your medicines. <laughs> okay, you so you're better at being a doctor than you are recording podcasts. <laughs> admittedly, no, admittedly, right. Now you were sick and I got my bag and I opened it and I got my fucking, like, <laughs> got my pharmacy out. Don't Wait, he's like a what? paramedic. You, what? You carry around a first aid kit at all times? I mean, that's admirable, but it's unusual. Well, well, not it's exactly not a first, a first aid kit. It's a whole fucking pharmacy. I carry around lots of different drugs, and I carry around cleaning supplies and different. This now sounds and... dodgier. This now just sounds like you're just a, just a drug dealer. No, it's, it's legal. a fine, fine like, legal drug. Tell me all the drugs. Yeah, like ibuprofen and meth. Is this yeah. just is this part of just keeping Dan alive duties? You just have to travel around with enough drugs to stop him. It's dying? keeping Matt alive duties. Well, no, He's under order to the not die. The reason I started it was when I went on blood thinners and I went, I am gonna bleed to death if just if I like cut myself slightly, so I start carrying all the stuff around just in case. And here yeah. I am. So you, it's not that you carry on very complicated structures. Like, you know, some people, like, you know, have a little note on them somewhere like, oh, if I've fallen over, inject this needle into me. It sounds like you've got very long-winded set of, like, 17 set instructions. <laughs> oh, no, you <laughs> joke. Here, here's it? the order in which you must insert no, medicine you, into you me. Joke, Just John, Grey's but... Anatomy falls out of the bag with it. You've got to learn medicine. To Genuinely, to you joke, but when when you're on the blood thinners, they, 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 each packet of drugs comes with a thing you put in your wallet, and it is literally a, pa- a fold-out pamphlet. For, for medical professionals. Like, it's a car, but it folds out into about, I think, a 14-page pamphlet. I feel like the Good Samaritan would just run up to you and be like, don't worry, sir, I'll save you. Just kind of read, oh, fuck this, that's too long. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, yeah. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just call 111 and leave you here. I'll tell uh, him roughly where I found you. basically, yeah, yeah, and then, like, seven hours later, Dan Middleton turns oh, up here, like, oh, he's dead. It's oh, a bit late. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, Daniel was sick. Uh, <laughs> I was sick. They gave me medicine, which I swear was measured in grams, not milligrams. Like so, it was a pill. It was. Sorry, it was I, many... I, also, I also, Daniel's being very dramatic. My cat's Daniel's medicine's doesn't... measured in grams. No, this is not Daniel's, that unusual. Daniel's taken very few drugs before, and he's being over dramatic. Just is it just wow. Dan is a cat? Because my cat takes grammed medicine. We just grind it up and hide it in her food, so she doesn't realise. Have you tried doing that, Matt? Yeah, just Matt, just hide, hide Dan's medicine in his food. He, I can he swallow spit, pills now. He as spit of a few his years pill ago. into a drink, and I watched him fumble for five minutes trying to get his pill out of a drink before giving. It dyed up. my fingies red. <laughs> I, I just, I just watched this very sick-looking man like fumbling with a drink, and he's like, oh, "My fingers are red." They gave me a capsule that, honest to God, I would have. It was, it was the biggest thing I've ever seen in my oh, entire my life. Oh my God! It's like a relatively was, small. Daniel doesn't have really taken drugs before, and he's a big baby. It was massive. Big I would baby. prefer it was a suppository. But I had a sore throat. I had a sinus infection. They were like, swallow this. I'm like, I don't know how. 
But anyway, I took medicine. You're on, you're and I was under strict instructions. Well, yeah, you're on antibiotics, you're on fancy drugs, and you're very weak and tired, and you've got CFS. Yeah, I'm t- Yeah, I'm super fatigued. I'm told to sit the fuck down for at least the next week. Don't do that anything. That's like a very sassy doctor. Just sit right the f- there. Actually, my, I chatted don't to my doctor. Feel, I don't hear him. I say, sit the fuck down. I'll tell you what's wrong with you. I t- my doctor, I chatted to about graphics cards. He had a 3090. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Well, you've got a doctor with a 30 ass put. <laughs> well, doctors are they're, they're pretty well paid, man. I kind of want them to be. Yeah, but like... I don't, I don't want my doctor to be like, you know, a 10 minutes their first day. Still. You know, brought still. straight in from Serco. About yeah. three people have 30 nights. It's me and Daniel. <laughs> and that doctor, yeah. yeah if I go it. to a doctor and I hear they've got a 30, I'm like, okay, good. This, this, this seems like this is a good doctor who's getting paid a lot of money. This yeah. is, I'm, I'm okay with this. Yeah, I want, my, on I want wall. my doctor to have, <laughs> when I go to a GP surgery, if I see solid gold limousines outside, great. Brilliant. That, <laughs> that just, just lets me John, know these are good doctors. John, that just means you've gone private. That's all that means. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so I'm hopped up on things and I'm told I'm absolutely no fuck, because I'm dizzy as shit. Because my inner ear like has swollen to the point where it's pressing its major. I was like, I don't fucking know. I can't remember. I was off my tits. Um, so... Uh, yeah, I was told, whatever you do, fucking sit down. Don't go under any physical stress. Just stay the fuck down. Anyway, the next day, both my <laughs> dogs escaped. They escaped. They, they, Yeah. So we had somebody over. They didn't shut the door properly. The wind blew the door open. And both my dogs were like, let's go on an adventure. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> so um, uh, we found, but literally, like within five minutes, we noticed they were gone. Uh, but we they weren't. Uh, around us, and uh, we got lots of fields and shit nearby. So I went running. I went sprinting. Actually, I sprinted a long way in a short time because I'm hopped up on fucking everything, and now I've got adrenaline in the mix. I'm having a great fucking time. Mm. Um, it's, the one slight problem is because near us, the only road is this one straight road, and cars go down it quite fast. Um, I was like, shit, I gotta go make sure they're not by the road. Because that's quite dangerous, and Lilith likes to attack cars. Um, so you know, I've got to, oh, I've got to fight. Oh, right. So I, I just left the house barefoot. So I was running through farmers' just barefoot. fields. This is things. quite exciting. No, I've enjoyed see, this story. No, see, no, can I just, I just need to clarify. This is, this is like, here. this is like uh-huh. a Discworld novel where Sam Vimes has got to, you know, save the world in some way, and he's like, and he's, he's, he's pushing himself beyond what humans can do. And you know, he's going to crash sooner or later, but can he get there before he does? This is a great story. No, I'm loving this that. Is the thing, right, me and Rebecca are fully dressed. Daniel is effectively in pajamas. Yeah, where the fuck were you during this, Matt? No, just drop it down. Matt- According just, to you Matt's just sitting in the back with a glass like, of lemonade, being like, oh, fuck, Dad's taking care Matt of it. Sort of oh, this is good lemonade. lemonade. Like, you seen any dogs? They're like, no. And he was like, no, I give up. That was Matt's How uh, dare you? Well, you know, I'll just log on to the RSPCA website and I'll just order, uh, you know, two more dogs on delivery or whatever. No, uh, right, look. <laughs> right. Fucking me and Rebecca, fully dressed, right? Quickly put shoes on. Ow. Daniel is barefoot in shorts on like a, a, a t shirt because just sl- <laughs> sleep a gear. shirt. It was an open shirt. An open shirt. Was and this is early I, April in the UK, so he's likely to die of pneumonia as a result. Yeah, it was so, but, freezing. It, it could well start snowing at any point. This is the thing, right? No, it was. It was. <laughs> Genuinely, we had a lot of snow and hell in the UK in early April. Yeah. yeah. But then here's yeah. the thing, right? The standard thing I always do, because weirdly, I've been in that situation four prior times. <laughs> You've been hepped um, up on meds and lost two dogs and no, dogs I, towards the road. I've had to run out of the house to look How for many a lost times does this happen? Row. But rule, grab a phone, put your shoes on. Which is what me and Rebecca did. Daniel fucking just fucking Ow. sprints Why, out the door. Why do you need the phone? Do you think the dogs are going to call you? <laughs> no, because you cannot you can't coordinate without a phone. If, if, someone, if someone finds them, it makes it really difficult to call without a phone. So it's good to have the phone to communicate properly. But here's oh, the thing. I see. You're doing a proper, like, 24-style thing here where you're all calling yeah. each other and sure. liaising through Fine. Chloe back but, at base. But here's the thing. Daniel, which may surprise a lot of you, is a surprisingly fast sprinter. <laughs> I've always been a... i have won medals for running. Yeah, like, to... fucking speedy as shit, right? So Rebecca I'm goes off quick. in one direction, Daniel goes off in another, and I go off in another direction. And I, you know, going around asking people, trying to... You know, I'm fine, hearing <laughs> stories of like, I saw two dogs, they were lovely, you know, like. I went far and fast to all the play because I, I went, I was like, they got a favourite field. So I was like, I'm going to the favourite field. I got to the favourite field and I saw like neighbours and their neighbours were like, hey, saw your dogs, they went back the way you just came. And I'm like, cool. 
So I ran back the way I came, and I went, like, just around this massive fucking, like, couple of miles in minutes. Like, it was yeah, really... No, a, he's not even exact. He Daniel exaggerates a lot, and he's No, I feel like there. he's exaggerating, because that, that would be a new land speed record. I was close to it. A I couple of miles, a couple of miles, a couple of minutes. No. He, I think he is, ran about. I is, think is he, four times no. the form. It's four I times think, faster than Roger Bannister. No, I think he ran about two miles in about fifteen minutes. Less That's that. more reasonable. Mm. It was less than fifteen minutes. I was mm. out for. Yeah, but well, yeah, I, I ran a whole thing, chatted to people, tracked the entire dog's path, and uh, eventually uh, Rebecca got him. And note that, um, he's, be- <laughs> note that he's barefoot, and also. In that, it, I, I guess in the sick situation where you're ill, Daniel, you getting up and like existing for 30 minutes Hush. is usually, yeah, that's enough to make you go, I'm going to so bed. At that, you know? Yeah, at that point, after th- I could only be awake for three hours before I needed eight hours sleep. Mm. Mm-hmm. I was tired. But this, of course, awake. is the point in the story for Maximum Drama where we cut to first person perspective of Daniel and the camera starts bobbing up and down and going in out of focus and then Daniel collapses and now the dogs have got to rescue him. No, 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 no. This is the part in the story where it goes and the intro starts and then there's a fucking mid-roll. Yeah. You know. And it's like, what's up, guys? I'm unconscious on the floor and I sit up and I'm like, hey, have you heard about VPNs? (laughs) Absolutely. <laughs> and then some right, guy so, you've never shown, never seen before shows up and says, "Hello, I'm a not much known mid tier Marvel character. I'm in this too." <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! This was part of the MCU, motherfuckers. <laughs> Everything is now. Uh, I'm waiting for my call up. No, I, I, so basically, the dogs end up exactly in the first place that I went to look for them. But they went, they went up there, then ran away from there, and went all the way around another couple of fields, and then back. It sounds like they had a lovely day out. Oh, they yeah. thought they but, did. Fucking assholes. <laughs> they had a lovely day. So they were back on the field, which is where Rebecca went. But I'd already been there and ran the thing. So I, I saw like some woman who was coming up. I was like, I was just seeing your dog. Your wife's gone. And I went, fucking great. Now, I briefly, can stop sprinting now. I need to give a perspective of what was happening. When, uh, my perspective during during this exact thing. I get a Oh, this is one of those stories where we now get the same story, but from yeah. a different perspective. No, yeah. Because I, because me, me, Daniel and Rebecca went I in different those. directions, right? We all, we all went in different directions because weirdly we, record, we all coordinated without talking. We all went in completely different directions and such. And I get a call from Rebecca going, I've got them, I've got them. Have you seen Daniel? And I went, no. <laughs> <laughs> we now need to find Daniel. Yeah, and Rebecca's like, can you look for Daniel? <laughs> and I'm like, Okay. And I start walking and I pass Rebecca. I'm like, all right, and fucking Lilith and Matilda. Like, yeah, we've had a great time. Like, you little fucking asshole. Um, <laughs> and I keep walking. And then I start walking down the, the dirt sort of path. And then I see Daniel, right, just hobbling. Like the he's most. gone feral. He's yeah. taken his clothes off. He's no, just entirely right, coached well, in it, the because mud. Because it was so wet and stuff. His I was dog literally... infection is on view for everyone to see. It's horrifying to <laughs> I anyone was who literally comes like within five feet mud. of him. No, he was. I was caked in mud because I've been running over grass and shit. Like, so I had like mud up my fucking shins. Yeah, yeah. He had dirt, so he just looked like a mountain man. Um, <laughs> and I, 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 you, you mentioned Daniel that during all this, you ran up to like a tiny little play area. It's <laughs> like the world's saddest play area. It's just got like one fucking like slide or swing or some shit in it. And I, there was like a family there, and I ran up to it, and, like grabbed one of the bars, and went, "Have you seen a dog?" <laughs> but he's like half naked, and he's barefoot. This, this and he feels like yes, a good way to either get arrested or start a new cryptozoology no, legend. But didn't, didn't, <laughs> like didn't the beast the mother, of Bodmin. Didn't the mother hide their children behind her, Daniel? <laughs> yeah, they did. <laughs> they did. A mother hid their children from you. The crazed mountain man shouting about. <laughs> Uh, I approach Daniel hobbling down the road, and I'm like, oh, okay. You, it could have been really useful, though, if you think about it. Like, as soon as Dan went, the mother could be like, and that children is why you pay attention at school and don't do drugs. Well, <laughs> you joke, but genuinely, I when, when I started go- walking, walking, I did ask a guy I passed, I go, have you seen, <laughs> have have you seen you a seen man a wearing no shoes? <laughs> <running around? laughs> have you seen a crazy man? Yeah, He's that escaped was, that again. Was the, that was the best way I described it. And I walked down the road and see him hobbling towards me. I'm like, okay. Because, you know, <laughs> at, at that point, dogs are fine. I'm going, Daniel's fucked at the bed. I wouldn't trust Daniel to, like, walk up and down the stairs. So that's point. the point where you think, oh shit, we brought the dog's leads, but we didn't bring the Daniel leads. He, How are we yeah. going to get him home? <laughs> well, yeah, and he fucking comes around the corner, and I'm like, are you okay? He's like, he's just gonna, just give me a second. And he sits down on the floor, and he just lays down, I'm going, okay, he's just catching his breath. And then I just, his face just goes bleh, and he just moves to the side and go, oh, fuck. <laughs> 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 yep, he completely I, just I gave passed it all. out. 
And I, I can't it carry all. Daniel. Daniel's a large man, both in stature. All right, rub it in. But I'm not anymore, like, fuck. Look, and I'm like, ugh. Wake away. Like, Plus, you know, the, the, we, we don't even want to know what's coming out of his dong infection right now. We just don't want to get near him. <laughs> but this is it. I get him up, and then I'm half carrying him back. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it's... Oh. So then I, we get home. I sit in the kitchen, and I'm like, all right, I'm sitting, everything's fine. And then I notice a pool of blood has appeared underneath me. And I'm like... Oh no, a dog <laughs> infection. And this is the second time that I died. Um, no, so I, ha- I lifted my, my right foot up because it was quite clearly coming out of my right foot. And there was a massive blood blister on my big toe. And as I lifted it up, the pressure built and it burst. And blood just went fucking flying. Like there was like a trail of blood. Like I've seen blood squirt out of my body now. And my reaction was, uh oh. But like, I didn't have enough strength to give that the reaction it kind of needed. That that's a reason. I think that's a reasonable reaction, to be honest. Uh oh, that's yeah. that's reasonable and fair. Yeah, I, but yeah, blood went really far, and then I had to go and um, uh, uh, what, what, clean it and put a big lot of bandages on it. And it turns out I ended up with uh, six blisters: four on the right foot, two on the left, uh, and I'd sprained both my ankles. Yeah, thankfully you were antibiotics. <laughs> also. Uh, I, think I, was an I would have been fucking dead already if I wasn't. Also, I, just, <laughs> I, I, I need to Don't clarify as well, me. because neither you or Rebecca ha- dealt with it. I did, right? Mm-hmm. The amount of blood around your... <laughs> <laughs> I cleaned up all the blood. I've cleaned up everything in your fucking house at this point. Yeah. It's, what's really funny was that Matilda had injured her, um, her foot on the run as well. And so we had the same injury on the same foot. <laughs> no, not we as would, bad. But like, is your dog also squirting blood everywhere? No, no just a little bit, Jim. Because she just, she clearly uh, uh, just caught a stone or something on her pad. Oh, oh. But, yeah. Oh, so fuck that dog. <laughs> Daniel's fucking in the shower, fucking f- fanning about, and there's just blood everywhere. And I'm frantically <laughs> running around trying to f- get up all the blood. And I'm, you know what? I was paranoid at the time that Daniel was going to pass out again. <laughs> I, was, I was, I was like, oh, oh dear, you know. Fair enough. Yeah. Rebecca's stressed. Daniel's stressed. I'm running about and cleaning up the fucking blood. I cleaned everything off your fucking floor. <laughs> Fun. Pish. So, meanwhile, blood. let's have the same story from John's perspective. John wasn't <laughs> there, and I had no idea what was going on. John was actually having a lovely day doing something else elsewhere. This, this business story is way more relaxing. <laughs> John's just enjoying a nice glass John, of that. But hey, sitting the outside, episode. having a lovely day. I had no idea any of this was happening. John, you're the filler episode in this anime, and I love wow. it. Wow. <laughs> Sometimes you need one of them just to, you know, give the audience a bit of a break and yeah. have a light, fun episode with one of the side characters. That's oh, fine. Oh, just as a content warning, the previous bit of the story contained injury and blood detail. <laughs> Probably should have. It doesn't matter. Um, so, right, but that's not the end of the story, you see. Oh, good lord. <laughs> what happened in the shower? Did you fall over again? No, no he didn't. I, I was go... checking on him. No. And to, to clarify, he was wearing under- underwear, which actually made it sadder, I think, because it's just this I, very sad, I dirty kept, man. In I the kept shower. my underwear on because of my dog infection. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's um, just, there's just, there's just, I have this image <laughs> forever, the dog's but told you not to get it wet. Yeah, of Daniel but... just looking exhausted, fucked, covered in dirt and blood, completely wet. <laughs> I mean... I I do enjoy the fact that that is also one of my uh, Twitch startup screens. Of yeah, me it is sitting actually. In the shower. It basically just looked like that. But sadder. <laughs> it's sadder somehow. Yeah. Um, you weren't smeared with blood during that. Well, that was your million subscriber video, wasn't it? No, was it? I, no, I can't remember. Or was it, it was. a billion views or something? I yeah, it was something videos. ridiculous. It was something. Something, yeah, some stupid fuck. Where it I, was I, milestone I, subscription. I, I decided instead of celebrating it to mourn it, which I thought was quite a fun idea, and some people genuinely checked up on me. <laughs> you sure weren't okay. with mud at the time. I remember there was no mud. No, I, well, I'd been in the shower for a little bit then. I thought it was a nice little bit of image because I had the Nokia shirt underneath that came on, you know, came yeah. visible as the what was in it. I thought it was a nice sort of that professionalism, the other thing. It's like, symbolism. It's YouTube. I didn't have it. I didn't stop at the end and go, oh, remember to like and subscribe. Actually, most of the comments were, you are John Wick, lol, which I'll take. Fuck it. <laughs> um, but anyway, so, clean myself up with Matt's help. Got the blood off the ceiling. Sorted out the dogs. 
Actually, I will say at this point, because I've forgotten this bit in the story, the dogs weren't actually found by Rebecca or Matt. They were found by just another dog walker that we know who grabbed them because they've seen us loads of times because, again, I live in the middle of fucking nowhere. Oh, that's like nice. So you guys sent that person some cookies or something. We, uh, yeah, we have. Yeah, no, they were fortunate to live in the middle of nowhere, but it's the middle of nowhere where several people are nicer than own dogs. Yeah. It's like, the, it's like where I assume John lived, but I know for a fact that John lives in the middle of Birmingham, which is such a weird fucking place. <laughs> It's, he's stabby. That's what he likes. John likes a good stab. He likes to sit on his balcony and watch people, poor people fight to the death. <laughs> you, you, you've never been to Birmingham, have you? Birmingham's, yeah. Birmingham's fine. It's the wrong Birmingham. Yeah, not the bit you live in, John. <laughs> <laughs> the first time oh. I visited John's house, we sat on the balcony and he offered me drinks. <laughs> Didn't accept it. Don't drink. But he had a he had a Fanta, so I had that. And then he and then he started throwing he started throwing notes this off a, the. This uh, is all bullshit, by the way. Throwing, I don't know Birmingham. Say I'm from the Midlands originally. I'm from the Midlands. I know Birmingham. He started Birmingham's throwing. Fine. It's no wrong with Birmingham. Five pound notes That's off his balcony and and watched people fight to the death for them <laughs> and laughed all the time. You know okay, you that bit's true. That you know, bit is true, but the rest of it's not. You know the guy in Full Act 3 who sits on his balcony and he wants to blow up uh, Mr. Megaton? Mr. Tenpenny! Yeah, that's you, John. That's how mm. I imagine you in my Who has head. the curious fact, note of law that he actually came over post-apocalypse on a boat or something to America from Britain, which was never really See? explained <laughs> properly and was never really fleshed out upon. But apparently there's still just transatlantic travel in the Fallout universe that most <laughs> people don't really talk about much. I mean, yeah. I, I, I'd just stay on the boat, wouldn't you? You'd probably just stay on the boat. Water would absorb a lot of the radiation. Stay on the boat. Um, yeah, that's, that's what John's house. But no, so the story. Fuck, there's a, little, there's a little bit more. There's a little bit more to the story, which is a few days ago, I now uh, when I was off my antibiotics and the majority of the painkillers, um, the, the blisters on my foot, which are healing up nicely, were fucking bad. And the one on my big toe is literally the size of my big toe. It's fucking gross. Um... But I was I went to the, the bathroom at night, the very shuffly feet, and I managed to catch the blister underneath oh, the metal bit between the I don't want to hear this. No, I'm done with the oh. story now. And I went, la, 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 so I lifted la, la, my foot done. up and I took off the entire blister oh, and a lot of skin. Daniel. There was about oh, oh, I'm gonna have to put a content I, warning. I, oh. I counted just, the can layers. We just move on to Lego <laughs> Star Wars or something. I counted the layers. Uh, oh, Daniel, no, Dad, that bad. At least six. No. Mike, cut it, cut him off, edit it out. <laughs> bad touch, bad touch. So yeah, that was the third time I died. So there's the three deaths that I've had in the past like two weeks. Yeah, thankfully nothing, nothing significant happened during that at all. <laughs> no, no, nothing at all. Nothing else went on. No, just been playing Elden Ring. Yeah. Actually, got my Steam Deck and a new dog. Uh, <laughs> I got <laughs> I got the dog. It's insane. Um. I got, I got, I got a Steam Deck. It's very good. Have you got a Steam Deck, John? I don't have a Steam Deck. Daniel? I'm not sure what I'd really use it for, to be honest. Playing games. I'm playing Fallout Four. Daniel, right? Daniel. Yeah. are you and not? Aren't you RMAing it? <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> I will say it, the B button does stick quite a lot when it gets warm. It gets hot, and then the B button starts to get sticky. It kind of catches on the top. I've actually started playing in a different style that makes it not a problem. The buttons but I do kind of get it. sticky if they get Just too hot. The B button, because Everything it's kind of weirdly it shaped. Jesus, it's, like it a millimeter, it's like a millimetre too short. Is it made short. of bread? Yes. No, but it's a millimetre too short, the B button. Like, literally. So sometimes when you push it down, the top, it just catches under the top of the, like, the lip. Oh, that sounds appallingly in. designed. It's a, I mean, I must admit, for a console, <laughs> it is... And it's the most mixed bag I console watched, I've I ever played. I watched your show. It's like, look, it's updating. And the fucking screen's rolling around. It's got a fucking BIOS screen. It on. did, it literally. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, so, part, like, it's loud. Like, playing Dark Souls 2 is so fucking loud that I have to have headphones on. Hey, you've you've talked me out of it in, like, 20 seconds. Just like, if I had to... any consideration of buying this before, if you're well done. To, like, you've officially killed that for me. If you're trying to play something like FTL, it's quite enough that you can play it in bed next to someone who's asleep. If you're playing Dark Souls 2, uh, you'd probably hear it over some sort of air raid siren. The thing is, uh, I can play FTL on, on everything mobile else. or a tablet so easily. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> right, any game that's simple enough that you would that you could play on it, you could play on something else. The games you'd want to play on it are games like Dark Souls 2. <laughs> you're not really selling yeah. it for that, are you? Fallout actually runs really nicely. It for, does. For... I did play. I did. You did make me try that. It runs really fucking nicely. Um, 
It's, it's but Fallout Four is it doesn't have like because so the, it, there's three kind of things that they have. They have the verified tick, which means it works flawlessly, and then they have the like yellow exclamation mark of oh, it's got issues, and then they've got that this just doesn't fucking work. Um, is, is the is the yellow exclamation mark for all games that use the fucking B button? <laughs> No, <laughs> it's it's a re- the B button thing is a really rare problem that they had in like an early version of it but that most people seem to have it fixed. But I, I it's very rare that it happens. You just got to chisel out a little extra millimeter at the top of the I'm, button hole. Problem I mean, I'm solved. Tempted to do that because it is a legitimately it feels like a tinkerer's console, and I've never felt a console where I'm just so inclined to tinker with it because like you, you get crack a it open, it turns out there's just a Raspberry Pi inside. <laughs> <laughs> taking you for a fucking ride. I mean, no, this thing has beef behind it. Like, I was playing like All fucking... right, Raspberry Pi, but someone's plugged a little extra RAM in there. <laughs> extra, an extra stick of RAM on the top. <laughs> Which is what gets in the way of the B button. It. It's just like one long, stri- one long strip of RAM and it gets in the way of the B button a bit. Fuck it. I don't know. I mean, I'm playing like Fallout 4 at 60. An that's a games console. It's, uh, no, 800p. Fuck you. It's an 800p screen. <laughs> that's not our criticism, but that's that's how it's able to run stuff at 60 because it's got a lot yeah, of it's, screen. It's, got, it's that, but it is a, it's a beefy little system. I didn't like Forza Horizon, like the new one, the, the 5. It only ran at 30, and I don't think 30 is good for racing games. For context to everyone, by the way, uh, the screen on it, it's, it's basically almost exactly the same size as the Switch OLED, and it's the same p- uh, pixels per inch, so it's the same sort of screen. It's yeah, but taller. the anti-glare thing on the expensive one is fucking great. Yeah. But it's not really like the expensive Switch. one. How expensive are you talking? I think it's 500, 550. It's quite high. That's quite high. Most, that's for the toppest one, though. And honest, but for a gaming computer, which you can plug into a monitor and oh, plug yeah, into no. a computer, that's it's insane. That's a like, good the price. The value you get out of that fucking thing is insane. And you can it get a really cheaper version for what? Like, what's the cheapest version? Like. 350 i think yeah maybe less maybe just i think maybe just 300 flat you'd want, i think you'd want the middle tier one because the, the cheapest one comes with shitty shitty storage you want the faster storage i think yeah no i'd say i actually i like the 512 i put a lot of games on it really quickly because it is just steam and all my games are like for a, <laughs> for a launch console i mean it's got dark souls 2 which i've, I've never played scroll of the first sin so i'm playing scroll of the first sin fallout 4 ftl disco elysium um, what else have I put on that fucking thing? I tried Outer Wilds. I've tried Death Stranding. Like all, like all of these massive fucking games, and they're all just like running amazingly. The cheapest version is three fifty, then then four sixty, then five seventy is the one you've got. Five seventy is the one we got. Yeah, mm. the, the five hundred twelve. But like for because the the, the three fifty one's the exact same thing. It's just got sixty four gigs of not NVMe storage, and it doesn't have the fancy gl- scr- anti glare coating. Yeah. But it's the same thing for three fifty. That's a fucking cracking deal. Yeah, it's, it just depends. It's, like, I just don't see a scenario where I'd want to play a big, complex game. I'd need that power to play in handheld mode. Because if I want to play something that's that big and complex, I will never want to do that handheld because I want a proper uh, nice controller. No. Like, I want to be on a nice chair. Oh, the controller's monitor. amazing. Uh, the controller's like, actually having proper analog sticks is so nice. I'd make the argument as well that I don't think it's necessarily the big, complicated games. Like, there's a lot of games which just haven't got switch ports that are like i mean i mean my biggest worry with it which i don't know if how the the games i want to play on it are you know that sort of 360 ps3 era of games that a lot of them yeah. get ported to the switch currently yeah, um, yeah. good old but, jank i love j- naughty's jank <laughs> yeah but the best, problem is best obviously, era of gaming when games just fell apart all the time but the problem is any pc ports <laughs> and everything from that was era, kind of shit but it was wonderful any pc yeah. ports from that era Oh shit! And I don't yeah. know if I trust them to run on a Steam Deck, let alone an actual computer. <laughs> well, see, the things that I've really enjoyed playing on it, which I wasn't expecting, was FTL uh, with mouse controls, as well as things like Age of Empires. I played a bit of Age of Empires too. It um, it's amazing to play because you've got that trackpad on the right hand side that is uh, just a mouse, and it works so fucking well. Because I'd never got into the trackpads on the Steam uh, controller. No. I know I was like, this just feels wrong, like for analog sticks and stuff. But for playing like, again, FTL, which is such a, just a wonderful game to play portably. It's only I, on I will like- just like to make, I, th- that feels like a, because FTL's on everything. I have it on my phone, my uh, tablet, no, no, and my no, Switch, no, no, and no, my no, laptop. No, 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 You don't have it on your Switch. FTL is not on the Switch. It is. And FTL is not on Android devices. Well, so I have an iPhone. You've got it on Apple products yes. on the PC. I don't have Apple Switch. FTL's on the Switch. It's not on the Switch. Into the Breach is on I the Switch. Why do I think it's on the Switch? 
because you're because an it's idiot. on everything. It's not on everything. It's on hardly anything, which is why I love. I always always wanted to play it in bed when I'm sick because I've been chasing off my fucking dogs to the point where I pass out. No, you literally. You I think you can still just buy it from their website just as an executable file, and then you could just put it on anything. Not on my phone. <laughs> Otherwise, you just load that file onto your phone and it would run. But, oh, right, but here's the thing. Games. Okay. <laughs> here's the thing that I adore about the Steam Deck is that if you hold down the power button, you can switch to desktop mode, and then you've got a full Linux desktop, and from there, you can just mod games. You can just install files. It's a full desktop. It's a PC. So you can mod something like FTL or Fallout and add loads of shit you want to it and then just play the game as a normal game. So it's got modding built in but and I, you can tinker and play with all the files etc and i John, love John's that. argument of like any game i'd want to do that much modding to i'd probably want to sit down properly and play but i appreciate that this because so, like i disagree with john i think in that i played all of the witcher 3 on the switch all of it it's the first time i could yeah. properly play it because i could never keep my attention enough when i was sat down properly whereas the switch i could pick up for like 20 minutes play a witcher contract and walk away you see the switch has got an amazing feature where you tap that button and it goes into sleep mode you tap that button again and you're back exactly if you're playing like the witcher on pc you you make sure it's saved you close it down if you want to play again you got to boot it up there's like time there there's extra time there that's the that is the best up. thing about the switch that even when it wants to do its updates you you can you, you know that, that that update's going to be done and installed in 15 seconds yeah and you're back but here's the really fun thing. The Steam Deck has that as well. So if I'm playing Dark Souls and I'm like, I want to go do something else, tap the button at the top, put the console down. And then when I come back, tap the button again, I'm back in Dark Souls. That's fucking amazing shit. That's just, that's just the best. I love that. I love being able to suspend stuff. I'm an adult. I've got shit to do sometimes. If I want to tap the button, <laughs> tap the fucking button. I will say, actually, looking at the list, like this game's like, it's, it's kind of weird conceptually that you could play God of War and Horizon on it. <laughs> yeah, apparently they run really nicely like as well. Like, for, for games which are like, these are PS4 only, it'll never be on anything else. You can play them on a handheld now, it's weird. Yeah. <laughs> and like, Hitman 3. You know, stuff, yeah. like, stuff like, there's a lot of games I'd play on it. It's just, it's, it's, I determined it's too large. It cannot fit in my bag comfortably. <laughs> it's fucking massive, but it's not uncomfortable. It's more comfortable to hold than the Switch. Because it's actually sculpted for human hands and not robotic claws. But oh yeah, I, I I struggle with the switch when it's just in its normal form with the actual console. I need to have that. I need to like, even if I've like got it out and about and not plugged in, I have to you know kick out its little kickstand, set it up, and have the controller with me anyway. Because <laughs> I can't be dealing with the fucking shoulder buttons as they are. I'm surprised yeah, a lot. Yeah. A lot more people don't buy those little third party like Joy-Con things that make it feel like an actual controller. Yeah. Well, apparently they're I, all partially shit, though. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing, is I don't want to glue something else rickety to rickety controllers. Well, no, not gluing it to control, like, like third-party controllers that are actually, you know, like, horrid. Yeah. Oh, something. yeah, I remember you get it. Yeah, you show me those. Well, like, like, I, I, I find the Switch controllers comfortable as is, but I think the weird, the weird thing about your situation, Daniel, how you want to use it and how you use your Switch is you don't really ever leave your house. <laughs> and you, it's something use you want to use around your house where you have plugs. And because of yeah, that, it's actually just... perfect for you. Yeah, the Steam Deck does not have a lot of battery life. <laughs> yeah, like, no, that's the thing. For me, it doesn't, because I play my Switch out a lot, and I put it in my bag, and the Steam Deck, as I tested with yours, can't fit in my bag properly, and yeah. uh, the battery life would destroy me, which is a second-gen I mean, one. Yeah, I mean, because if you remember, the Switch it only had about three hours battery life on its initial one. Yeah, they doubled then it, they... didn't it? They they doubled it with their with the second one after a few years, but original. So it's got kind of like that original Switch battery life. If you're playing something like Fallout, you'll get two to three hours out of it. That's not if you're playing something like FTL, you're looking at between six and eight. That's pretty and, good. And you can customize that, so you can literally go in and change your fucking processor clock speeds and shit because it's a tinkerer's console. I it's, just don't want to do that on a console. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but no, but I'm saying, so I'm saying there's those three different types. There's the big tick and then there's the exclamation mark and shit, right? Fallout 4 has the exclamation mark one. And the reasons it has the exclamation mark one is uh, when it's booting up, it boots up the little play options thing. And that doesn't have controller support. So you have to tap the screen to click play or options or something because it's a full touch screen. That is literally the only reason. And the keyboard. That, that, that has a thing. Yeah, and if you are if you were typing your name in at the start... You have to manually, it doesn't automatically bring up the Steam Deck keyboard, so you have to push Steam, the Steam button and X to bring up the keyboard. 
For those two reasons, it doesn't get the green tick. That's it. That is the only two things that stop that getting a full tick. So if you see a yellow exclamation mark, chances are those games are going to work fucking fine too. And they'll list exactly why they've got those problems and what those problems are. I really enjoy like the sheer level of fucking transparency. I have noticed some interesting ones that aren't quite right. Like um, uh, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, the original one, not the fucking remake, I'm not playing that shit, <laughs> has a this doesn't work icon on my Steam Deck. And I, I, I play it. It's fine. It works absolutely perfectly it's fine. Actually, weirdly that you say that, because I'm looking through the my game's Steam Deck compatibility list right now, which just lists all the games I have and if they're compatible. And in the yellow icon, it had, lists San Andreas and Vice City in that. Oh, they've gone up to yellow now. I wonder why. Well, so what's it say about the yellow? Why Why don't they work? Uh, What's the thing they don't know? I don't know if this tells me. Wait, oh, there we go. Uh, sometime, this game sometimes shows mouse, keyboard, and non-Steam Deck controller icons. Yeah, that's, that's it. it. That's it. That's it. That's all it says. Yeah, that's, 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 that's a... I know how to get in a fucking car in Grand Theft Auto. You tap triangle, mate. <laughs> this, this, the control doesn't have a triangle. Yeah, so that's it. So if it shows, like, the wrong icons, yellow. So I, when, I, when I got it about a week ago... <clears throat> I there was like 191 of my games had a green tick. As of now, it's gone up to 198. So these games are coming out all the fuck. Like, it's ticking things off all the time. Steam are doing a great fucking job of just checking everything. So that's, without me buying new games, just suddenly seven games, they've gone, these are good. I mean, that's a big thing, isn't it? I mean, the, the yeah, fact the that, big... like, the Switch always, I'm like, the Switch is great. But when you get the Switch, you're like, oh, there's a game I want to play on the Switch, and you have to pay fucking, like, 10 quid more than the PC version that you already own. To yeah. play it, whereas you just have them already. Like, it sounded like fucking case in point GTA trilogy. I waited for that for fucking years. And it finally came yeah. out, they charged £50 and it was a piece of shit. It's all right now, but, you know, piece of shit. But I'm playing the originals with, you know, the whole soundtrack. Yeah, and the you didn't need to rebuy it, style. did you? No. You can I play the Mafia it. Definitive Edition on it. You can play fucking The Boss. Everything. <laughs> you can play, well, I, I, Worms Armageddon works amazingly on it. Worms Armageddon! I can play Worms Armageddon why, in the game. Why are you so surprised, mate? Like, Worms Armageddon should run a pocket calculator. <clears throat> no, but older the games tend to have... Simplest game in the world. Older games tend to have problems oh, running Oh, yeah, no, on, I, I'm surprised that even works at all. Worms Armageddon has always run like a dream. It's one of those games that's just like, I don't know, they entirely probed it to an assembly or something. For yeah. some reason, it just know, works on everything forever. Like Roller Coaster Tycoon and 1 and 2 will never not work on any system. Sorry, do you know why Worms Armageddon keeps working? It's because they keep fucking patching it. Like, Hell. hang on, wait. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah I'm going to check it once I begin on Steam and find out when their most recent patch was. Let's see when your most recent patch was. Oh, God, I never know which bit to fucking click. There's some weird uh, games here that, like... Update uh, history. There it is. There's some weird games here listed as not working at all, like... Arkham Knight's listed as not working at all. Follow and Sale? GTA 3, Mafia Definitive Edition. Uh, well, GTA 3, I assume, will work because... Uh, San Andreas work. I would assume so as well, but it's 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 in the unsupported completely list. But that does just uh, that could mean they work. They just haven't tested them, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. So right, Warm Armageddon got a three point eight patch uh, in twenty twenty. Oh. In which added loads of new stuff. It added loads of bits and pieces. It added motion tweening. It added a Windows mode. Sorry, what's it tweening? added a fucking what the fuck is motion tweening? Uh, tweening. Yeah, most so so it adds frames in between the frames of animation that they've got, so it looks smoother. Like, like are you sure you didn't just invent that term? Tweening, motion tweening, motion tweening. Stop oh, saying a, tweening. <laughs> tweening is a common. You're an editor. It man. is not. It know. sounds really dodgy because tweed is also used as a term for someone who I believe is yes, it's just between <coughs> t- child be- and teenager. In between, so you, you talking no. about tweening? Sorry, that I don't, I don't. Yes, okay. don't. Daniel, Please Daniel's, just stop. Daniel's right. Apparently, look, it's in betweening. I know in betweening, but it's often abbreviated to just tweening as like a slang yeah. for in betweening. We, we need to not do that. It sounds very wrong. <laughs> I mean, the first result if you search tweening That's is 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 an Adobe words. help. Stop file. googling tweening. You're going to be on the list. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm already on a fucking list, man. <laughs> like, so basically, yeah, so it's had uh, 370 fixes, 45 changes, and 61 new features Worms Up Again got in 2020. Like, it, 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 it was released in 99. Like, that's so. Yeah. <laughs> 
That's like 30 years of support for the best Worms game. If you disagree, you're wrong. Sorry. So that's that's why that works brilliantly. So that's Sorry, why I wanted that on there. But... Years. 20 years. Wait, what did I say? How old am I? <laughs> 1999, right? More was than about more than 20, 20 years no, it's ago. More than 20 years. But it's not, Worms Up Again has been out for longer than since 2002. On I Steam, must... it was released on that in 1999. No, it wasn't because Steam wasn't around in 1999. Exactly. Well, but Worms Up Again that, predates Steam. I'm Worms Up Again came out in 1999 alongside Yes, Rise that's what I'm saying. The release date listed on Steam is 99. My point is, it's not yeah. 30 yeah, I would years. Guess, I would have guessed about 25, no. yeah. It's 24 to 25. Okay. Yeah, mm, that's about right. Because <laughs> yes, and Worms Up Again definitely is, is older than Steam. Yes. Yeah. Everything's fucking older than Steam. Steam's older than fucking Steam somehow. Steam looks like it was made for a computer 10 years <laughs> earlier than fucking Steam. I was this way when I booted up the Steam Deck and I didn't see it was all fucking green and shit. Didn't when you tried to buy a game on the Steam Deck, it broke? Uh, yes. It threw up a massive error. Every Actually, time you tried to buy a game, it I <laughs> found an error on the very first screen that the game gives you. It gives you. On the login to Steam option, which you actually have to type your Steam password in instead of uh, just ticking off a list. And ours is 255 fucking characters long. So I had to manually type out 255 fucking characters. I was annoyed. I was very annoyed. Uh, and it took four goes because I kept getting it wrong. Okay, but so yeah. I, I, need to, I need to go back to tweens for a second. <laughs> no, you don't. Wait, let me say this. There's, I found the, there's an emoji button on the keyboard, and if you hit that on the password thing, it goes black and white writing of an error appears on the screen. I found a yeah, I found a bug on the first. It's definitely an early access console. Stunning. Sorry, John. Briefly, we're not yes. talking about tweens. We're talking about tweening. Motion tweening. No, we, no I'm, I'm talking about tweens now. So oh, if God's if you sake. Google tween. And thus Google kind of tries to put together its little like action pack of information you might be interested in. Like, you know, little drop downs that like it's pulling from Wikipedia or something. So the order of information that it gives you, presumably starting with the most important at the top going downwards in the little kind of like info box it generates on the right is. The first one is, uh, yeah, what age are people when they're described as tweens? Okay, excellent, uh -huh. very sensible. Very um, the second you. is nutrition. <laughs> Oh. What much... should you feed your twin? <laughs> oh, I thought, like, how much nutrition you get if you ate a twin. <laughs> Followed by <laughs> conversation starters. Okay, getting getting a bit strange. Then tips. Just tips for tweens. Do you know what? Do you know, what tips? Which number seven is, don't be afraid to start conversations about sex and drugs. I would be oh. afraid to do that with somebody like, who's, oh, like, no. 12. I don't know, I don't know who's, who's, who's populating this, but Google, I would suggest... Not starting conversations about sex and drugs with random 10 to 13 year olds. Imagine going up 10 year old being like, what a sliff, mate. Now, yeah. and Shandy? You know what, before I read this article, <laughs> I, mean, I wouldn't have started a conversation I about mean, sex and drugs. I mean, in fairness, but that's, now, what MP, that's what our Tory MP did, isn't it? That's what he got out for. Khan, Imran Khan, eh. I really meant to that. No, I just, right, I, but, I, I just, right, just enjoy nutrition is second. Like, the second thing people want to know is how many calories should my tween be getting? I mean, it's a good thing to know how to feed your child. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't know how to feed a child. Or Sorry. Or entertain a child. I, I, but I was going to say, oh, go on. you don't need to search any of this shit, right? Because I found this wonderful thing. If you need to converse with any child for whatever fucking reason, a child comes up to you whatever and you need to fucking pull something out of that, knowing about Marvel films has made that so much fucking easier. Because oh. you can just... There's so much of it. You go, oh, who's your favourite? Captain America? Oh, you're wrong for these reasons, you fucking idiot. And it's great. You can no, have but a proper full no, Are you sure about this, though? Because is this more of us talking as millennials thing? And actually, are the kids not as into it as we might be? No, because the kids are back we into got the Sonic. fucking nostalgia for the, the epic 90s series. Like the Spider-Man cartoon, the animated series, the X-Men cartoon. They had the best theme song ever. Which is coming back. Yeah, Sorry, that's can, pretty and it's exciting. A, and it's a continuation. It's but carrying that's on. For, uh, you see, that's for us, though. That's not for them. That's 100% like for us. Two things. Yeah, a, still watch it. modern Marvel films are clean marketed at kids as well. Second of all, I would never get into a position where I need to talk to a child. I hate that. Why? Well, I live in a little place and kids come up to me and chat. Well, Daniel's now, friendly. Matt, if, you, if it ever comes up, you could, you could ask them, are you getting you 1,800 calories a day? <laughs> No, but here, if I said, not, would you like you know, this Mars used, bar? I'll used, help you along. I here you go. Duck, duck, go. And I searched tweener duck, duck, go and tween twenty, commonly known as commonly used as non-ionic detergent for solu solubilizing membrane proteins during isolation of membrane protein complexes. I've it's searched it on Bing and it's just giving me pornography. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. It's got 3% moisture, apparently. And it's well, got 0.25% really, yeah. residue on ignition. Wow. wow. And less than 0.0003% arsenic. Well, the more you know. Oh, I can buy. So, I can buy. I can buy a bottle. I can buy a litre bottle of it for £120. It's done by tweens off the internet. Add That's bad. That's a bad thing. <laughs> That's a bad thing. You might have to give up your MP position. It's a bad thing. Don't do that. No, as anyway, long as she says sorry. As long as she says sorry afterwards. Anyway, but only after the fact, not before. Uh, when's the next elections? We got the local elections coming up, don't we? I we fucking some... don't. Are they for councils or are they actually council. for MPs? No, they're for, that's council. just for councils, isn't it? Councils. I, we yeah, don't but... live councils. Liverpool right? aren't getting them. You know why? Because our fucking council were horribly fucking corrupt, and the mayor got ousted for being corrupt, and the government said the government commission, which is currently running the council, and they are completely redrawing the council lines and changing all the councils around and gerrymandering it, and we don't get council elections until next year. But the fun thing is, suspiciously, in the predictions, all the green councillors are suspiciously not going to get re-elected according to predictions because of how they're drawing the lines. What? No Isn't way. that interesting? The Labour Party and the Labour stronghold where they don't fucking do anything. Ah, mm. Labour. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Every single... All the Green voters now live in their own little tiny, tiny areas that have been assigned to the constituency of Doggerland. Yay! <laughs> Wait, do you want to do a for Liverpool Council I love fact? Doggerland. It's right? my favourite thing. Liverpool Council. <laughs> we got a mayor. What you get up to on your weekends, John? I don't need to know. I we... just enjoy. I just enjoy the fact that there is a significant portion of the early humanity that resided around Britain who decided, you know what, we're going to settle over there on Doggerland, and it's going to work out. Oh no, why are we sinking? I don't know if that was their <laughs> fault. It's, it's, like the, it's like the shittest Atlantis ever. In fairness, John, right? I thought Venice was the shittest Atlantis in, in ever. In the current era, right? Several people live in next places which are going to be flooded, and we know that, and they're still living there. Why don't they just sell we their should, homes? We and should move? definitely. We, we should speak to the people in Doggerland, which is now submerged in the middle of the North Sea and have a chat to them about it. My point was... I would never understand why people buy houses in tornado places. Why would you do that? It's like, yeah, it gets smashed up by a tornado every now and then. And you're like, well, what? Tornadoes it's... like kind of... There's, there's huge bits of like America that just occasionally sometimes have tornadoes. Sorry, so yeah, most you of America didn't have that. any property on any of it. You'd have a very large bit of empty. Most of America, yeah. right? You, you either that. live somewhere that's, pre- that, that's susceptible to wildfires or fucking volcanoes or hurricanes or tornadoes or earthquakes. Wait, how many volcanoes do they have in the US? Hundreds. A few. Do they? I don't know, I guessed. Um, hundreds. We've got hundreds and we've got a volcano few. volcano map. John, have a guess. Well, they're on the fault line, so there's going to be volcanoes on the fault know. line. Yeah, that's what I'm I don't thinking. feel like... At, well, I don't on think the San Andreas fault volcanoes line. in the world, right? Yeah, Yellowstone is a volcano. Of, like, no, one? I don't find it's active <laughs> volcano. <laughs> no, no, no. Yellowstone is an active volcano, as is Mount St. Helens. Yeah, but it's the shit kind. M- Mount St. Helens erupted in 1980, which erupted so hard, half of it fell off. That's cool, that is. There's actually footage of that. It's weird. <laughs> Just yeah, half of, it's half terrifying. Of fucking okay, listen, there's about off. 25 actually proper volcanoes in the world right now. Whoa. What? Like, you know, erupting ones. Not shit ones. Like, oh, I'll make a bit of steam occasionally. Like, proper. Like, proper, I will rain down a hellfire upon you uh-huh. as a real possibility. Uh-huh. Proper ones. Uh-huh. Here's so the you're fu- only counting here's volcanoes the fucking that are active. English man coming over and telling other countries what what are and aren't volcanoes. And they're all pretty interestingly, all, almost all are either on the west coast of Central and South America or the east coast of whoa, uh, sorry. Asia whoa, and whoa. various islands. Whoa, so there. you're telling me that they're all like they're all on like little lines. It's interesting. They're all they're like, they're like a range of lines. <laughs> like there's like a pattern. <laughs> we should look into that. There might be something to that. John, Admittedly. I think you made a seismic discovery there. I oh, know. <laughs> Admittedly, there is a lot of discussion about how um, in the Pacific, there's what's known as the Ring of Fire, because that's where most of the active volcanoes are along those fault lines, and how it's weird that they're all there and not on the other fault lines. And it burns, burns, burns. There is that's a, there where is the a, alien there, devices. There is a debate among volcanists about that, but you know. That's where the alien device is under, in that fault line. Volcanists? Yeah. I thought it was volcanologists. Ah, close enough. One's from Vulcan. <laughs> the other studies volcanoes. Oh, that's one in Alaska. Then there's, then there's the Vulcan files, who so are just a bit too into volcanoes. <laughs> Minor activity or It's a dangerous warning. fetish to have being a Vulcan yeah, file. Yeah, actually, I'll have you very much know there is a volcano in America currently erupting. Thank you very one. much. One, okay. 
So I said 100, so I was wrong. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you sure were. But how many non how many just volcanoes are there in America? Somebody just Google that. Come on. I'm trying to. I, I'm on a map of active volcanoes. I've found an active volcano map, which is pretty Why good. Are you just, how many volcanoes in America? Just Google that. Fuck me. Fuck I'm tons. Those, those are... Well, it's, it kind of looks like it's not so much like there's volcanoes as there are America. big swathes of space where there might be well, volcanoes. Yeah, there's, there's fault lines. The US Geological Survey says there are 169 volcanoes in the United States that scientists consider active. There you go. 169. There you go. There you go. I was right. 100. Yeah, there you go. Okay, now, okay, I've got I've got an idea here. What? It's okay. <laughs> Call me cr- Okay, now, l- l- hear me out here. So, nah. like, tectonic fault lines right which may may not be a term i've just kind of squished some words together right yeah Mm -hmm. like they're shit (laughs) they're shit like if you think about it what do they do what do they do they make volcanoes well not necessarily volcanoes are kind of shit and they move the continents around i mean all the countries are going to be not where we left them eventually and Mm. that's going to be annoying to sort out so what if we got a fuck ton of concrete and we filled all the fault lines. Uh huh, yep, yep, yep. Apart yep, from yep, the ones, yep, yep. Th- th- those are the ones that are going towards each other. The ones that are coming apart will, like, I, I don't know, tether them. We'll, like, we'll tie them together with, like some, re- with some like, reinforced steel. Query, or query. All the way along. Can and that con- way, mm-hmm. the world's not moving and there ain't no more fucking volcanoes. Can the concrete withstand temperatures of 20,000 degrees and pressures exceeding? Pressures in the sun. Well, concrete was my opening gambit. Obviously, we need a Vulcan file to come in here and tell me, like, what material we need to use. Because something's got to be able to resist that heat. Sorry, pressure. did you say a Vulcan file? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Somebody fancy Spock. Yeah, obviously. All of every fucking current writer of Star Trek. Mm hmm. <laughs> we just need someone who knows about volcanoes to come in here and tell us what material to use. We've got to be able to find some material. Like, you can't tell me, oh, literally no no element in the existence can resist volcanoes. Because otherwise, we'd make shit out of volcanoes, wouldn't we? Like, we'd make tanks out of volcanoes. Concrete nothing begins destroy to it. crack before it hits <laughs> 35 degrees centigrade. Okay, so we need to do something else. But the basic idea, let's just fucking stop the fault lines. Uh Right, yep, 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 yep. Yeah, plug them up or tie them together. Can I I just make a brief point, by the way? Everyone who always complains that we bring up the things for John to not understand how they work, he did it on his own this time. (laughs) He did it on his own. He's He's just going off about volcanoes and fault lines. Don't look at us. I'm just saying. Oh, and earthquakes. I've solved earthquakes. You're welcome. Uh, I, well, uh, well, that wouldn't actually solve earthquakes. It actually no, that would make worse. earthquakes much, earthquakes much worse. Earthquakes are caused by tectonic plates like shuffling about or something. Well, yeah, but if they were yeah. attached together, they, the, the pressure from the moving would still be there, and it just caused they them just to shake. lift up. Yeah, and they it would actually cause more them. earthquakes if you if you glued them together. Probably no, it would cause a smaller number of much worse earthquakes, but way less often. Randall like Monroe, you you, if like you're listening... Generations could live without earthquake. Then there'd be one mega you? quake that would make a really good Netflix film. And then we'd be back to like a generation of no earthquakes. And everyone would be like, you know what? That was shit. A billion people did die. But we now know we're safe in no earthquake time. You know, there's no, a For like generations. Do you, do you think which we will give us time films, to repopulate. Do you think we Woo! can only make films about No more earthquake that... sex party. Let's all get pregnant. <laughs> I'm okay, hey, for a second. What the fuck's he on about? <laughs> Well, I want to know why he thinks that uh, something actually has to happen before somebody can make a film about it. Does he think that the film San Andreas is real? Do you think that LA was destroyed? Well, I think if we had like a proper mega earthquake, it would be much more likely that people would make subsequent films about that. Like right now, films about earthquakes are pretty boring and down to just earthquakes, really. Oh, no, there's this woman and she's got a child and they're trapped in a city where there's an earthquake. Like, I don't know. I, I want my mega quake. 2012 want, exists. I'm kind of curious yeah. what happens. To, like, to, if we just don't have earthquakes for, like, 200 years, then there's one. Like email. I think you should email Randall Moreau at XKCD and be like, hey, you do that what if book and you got a second one coming out soon. Here's one for the third one. What if we just glued all the tectonic plates together? Yeah. Super glow. Nothing breaks super glow. Can I That's just briefly true. make a point, by the way? There's a volcano between Los Angeles and San Francisco in LA called El, El Chichon, which, it, which erupted in 1982 and killed 2,000 people. America, 
Why? Super glue resists temperatures up to 120 degrees centigrade. Why are you suggesting they should have moved Los Angeles in 1981? My question is, right, so here's what I understand about America, right? Well, what precisely were you thinking they were going to do to these two major cities? No, 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 what I mean is that in America, right? Right, put them on the back of the truck, let's go. America, everything's on fire. And you say, my plan's stupid. Everything's on fire or underwater or being exploded or, or just generally having a bad time or being shot or starved to death or lying on a gurney dying because they can't afford healthcare or being shot by police why why not not do that america choose to okay, not but choose to not here's, <laughs> here's the thing that here's the thing that i gotta mention um because otherwise people are gonna get really annoyed at me john let's go back to the uh sex parties where you yeah. your goal is for everyone just to get pregnant so why are there sex We're parties like, the world out. The mega quake. Yes. okay right that's why okay <laughs> yeah right that seems like a bad thing to me. What? Repopulating the Earth. I think. I think if if we get to the point where someone's stupid enough to glue all the tectonic plates together, we yeah. should just call it a day for the human race <laughs> and be like, "That's that's fair." But I have noticed one thing, uh-huh. which is on this map I've got of active volcanoes and plate tectonics. I can't help but notice that we're looking pretty good. I ain't seeing no volcanoes and no fault lines anywhere near sorry, Britain. Sorry, wait, you're saying... So I feel like sorry, a British supervillain, the telling... first thing a British supervillain should do is find a way to really agitate them plates to make all the volcanoes in the world super erupt at the same time John, and all the earthquakes in the world trigger at the same time. Are you this telling me... fuck up everybody else, but not us. Are you telling me the United Kingdom, the, the British, are you telling me yeah. that they live in a very geologically stable... Um, Wet climate isolated with island protected from both the elements and foreign invaders and all geological activity. Are you telling me that's are you uh, is that what you're inferring? Because oh, I can't possibly believe that. On, on looking at this map, yes, though to be honest, Norway has even more incentive to do this. Norway's in an even better spot. Norway should just fuck the volcano. God, uh, God, with that, I imagine Britain should have taken over the whole world and subjugated everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Talking I'm not, John honest, I'm not sure the British Empire had much to do with volcano activity. Yeah, I bet they did. Uh, they probably did. Let's be honest. Yeah, they had the, they had the fingers uh, in all the pies, didn't they? Especially if those I mean, pies it's were Iceland hot, I, I feel them. sorry for, because Iceland's going to get fucked by my supervillain mega volcano plan. Super Iceland is plan, so it? fucked. <laughs> well, yeah, but if Iceland erupts... Iceland's just going to be something they say, what the fuck did we do to deserve this? Yeah, but John, this? if Iceland if Iceland can freely erupts, all the, all the sort of... St- all, all the smoke that comes from the volcanoes will just drift over to the UK and it'll rain... That's true, actually, It will yes. rain fucking ash. I mean, I think if we do All this, the crops will die in the UK. I think Scandinavia is in a good place to become, like, the new world leader. And I think that sounds like that's a lovely world. I don't think that's how it works. I Wouldn't think that's how it works. Talks. Okay. Talking, I was going to say, talking to John, it's like reading Yahoo Answers, isn't it? <laughs> really confident answers, yeah. Like. <laughs> uh, wait, uh, yeah. Uh, answer. <clears throat> I glued what happens. I glued. I googled what happens if we glue all the tectonic plates together. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I'd be fine. Oh, oh. good. Well, that's nice to know. Uh, yeah, I that's... was worried the plan might not work for a second. Answers. Yeah. How do volcanoes <laughs> work? Just yeah, link back to this podcast. Anymore. How do volcanoes work? Answers.com. <clears throat> Why are we looking up volcanoes? We know how volcanoes work. I don't know how volcanoes oh, work. Well, yeah. I've got a vague idea how earthquakes work. Uh-huh. Because that's just literally like plates pressed against each other no. until they eventually no. go. No, and then uh, earthquakes the... will be formed by any type of movement by plates. It can be formed by plates moving away from each other, in fact. But I'm not 100% sure like how that, I mean, like, is a volcano John, just did you, like, did... there's John... already lava underground, John, but if you squish it sorry. together. Is, like, is a volcano, is... like, as, like when a volcano erupts, is that like squeezing a spot? John, yes. I learned about this in fucking, in fucking secondary school level geography. Like, what the... I will say this isn't yes. This is like fucking it, engines, and it must and it must have been pretty early on because you dropped out at school so young it would be illegal <laughs> these days. Exactly, and John's not joking either. And this is just, so you should know this, John. I would say it is like squeezing a spot if underneath your face was a constantly shifting sea of spot goo, also known as blood. 
Are we very we I'm not actually back. sure what the stuff inside spots is. So that may or may According not be to the Matt case. there, it's blood. So Matt no. needs to go to the <sighs> fucking hospital immediately. Sorry, blood blister boy coming over here telling me to go to the hospital. I'm telling you, your blood's not white, you fucking idiot. What blood's white? <laughs> what is the stuff inside spots? Oh my god, it's what it's very what are you asking? What's the white stuff inside spot? Just yeah. go in it. It's just a protective goo sort of thing. What, why are my spots trying to protect the... What are they protecting? Uh, is my face being protected from I, the spot? Is the spot being protected from my face? I, What's I tell protecting you what, who here? I'll tell you I feel what. like I've just like... It's just like we built, someone's come in and <laughs> built a wall between me and Matt. And I appreciate it because it's Matt. But I don't understand what the purpose of the wall it's is. Pos, it's it's part of the... Uh, fine, whatever. Yeah, it's like a healing -y sort of thing. It's like... Um, uh, yeah, it's... Oh, oh, fuck it. Go in it. It's 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 sauce. I feel like you've got no fucking clue either. It's just a feeling. Like so many of these right. conversations. I'll tell you what, John. I'm John. I'm 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 I don't know something. And you're like ha 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 ha. John doesn't know anything. And I say okay, explain it to me. And you have no fucking clue either. John, I ain't got a fucking scuba. I just assume it's like to just sort of like marinara sauce or something. Not marinara. I meant to say carbonara. If it's if it's red, it's marinara. It's just a little. Of carbonara now that sauce. would explain why there can be different colours. Yeah. And that, why sometimes it's got bacon in it. This, this explains Matt's problem. Wrong sauce. Yeah. What Matt's got marinara. Fuck Matt's it. got marinara in his brains. You've got marinara in your fucking feet, Gail. Fuck it, don't. <laughs> I like how one of the plates is called Coco's plate. That's nice. <laughs> Jesus like Christ. One. It's my favourite one. It's the John, British you know, plate coming over. Tell most of them are called like really boring stuff like the North American plate, the Pacific plate, the Indo-Australian plate. And there's this one that's like, oh, this is Coco's plate. Oh, that's nice. John, Why? you know in Crash Bandicoot, where there's like like little rafts going along the river and you've got to jump on them? I've played it once, yeah. Yeah. Well, imagine if that bit of river was just completely full of those 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 log rafts and they were all jostling around and having a good time. Yeah, that's, all right. That's what tectonic plates are no, like. But imagine that and then know, slow it I've down to the most I've got a idea how what tectonic plates are like. It's just, I don't get how that feeds through into sometimes a volcano just fucking vomits fire at us. Well, the fact because it gets squished, squished together and water goes bloop at the top. Water? What In the, the Crash Bandicoot <laughs> methodology. I'm trying to bring it down to John's level. Fucking hell. I mean, there's... I mean, John, have you ever seen one of those diagrams the inside of the Earth? Okay, hang on, hang on. Hang. Let, 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 let's, let's, let's roll this back a step. So, you know, like, the water cycle? Mm-hmm. Like you know, water evaporates, clouds, rain, etc. Oh goes yeah, you circle. make it in that. You get that little like plastic topped little thing with a little green hill on it, and then yeah. the water at the bottom and cotton wall at the top. Yeah, it exactly. Goes around and rains. Yeah, the water cycle. Mm -hmm. yeah, Is I... lava like that, just with underground rather than clouds? Where you know what, John? Come, lava comes up to us, but occasionally the ground that's at the bottom next to the lava underground gets melted back into lava. So there's a lava circle, same as there's a water circle. No. No, no, no. I think I'm right. Okay, well, fuck it, right. yeah. <laughs> sure, fuck it. Fine, yeah. You did it, John. You know the world. Yeah, I mean, it could just be plates floating on just a shit ton of molten stuff because of the sheer pressure of the earth and stuff. Sorry, it. Did you well, yeah, but there's got to be more molten John, stuff added to it sorry. to make up for the molten sorry, stuff. John, are you saying... Otherwise, we're running out of molten John, stuff. John, what do you mean running out? And then we need a new Netflix disaster film about what happens when the earth runs out of molten John, stuff. John, have you what got happens? all your information about how the world works from the fucking core? Matt, what happens when we run out of molten stuff? Yeah, yeah, like, Matt. What could possibly happen if we run out of molten stuff? <laughs> Does the world? I think the world freezes. I mean, I think John, that's, that's, you that's, I well, shit. That's what causes ice ages. John, John, holy oh, fuck! John, that's what ice ages oh, are. John. It's when the world runs out of molten stuff. John, oh, over, shit. holy it's shit! Like, I've solved it. John, over billions of years, planet planets oh. will cool down and they will stop their tectonic activity. For example, Mars doesn't have any active tectonic activity. Because it's cold inside, for lack of a better phrase. Oh, this is this is the Netflix movie right here. This is it. The day the world ran out of molten stuff. I can see it now. <laughs> Again, there are butlers going to be in it. It's going to be great. That is part of the fucking... That's basically the movie The Core. Um, mm -hmm. John? Yes? How did we stop the Ice Ages previously then? Like, the ones with the dinosaurs Well, I think, like, once there's an Ice Age, because obviously when it's all cold and snowy, there ain't no volcanoes, because it's all cold and snowy everywhere, so there's no volcanoes. <laughs> so then the world's got time to, like, grow Sorry. more molten shit. Just, we're just like, Matt, let that one go, let that one go. <laughs> let 
And then we're back in, then we go back into a hot period where there's more volcanoes now. And like, you know, the volcano, like, you know, and then like, you know, in, in, in horizon frozen future, alloy causes the volcanoes to erupt at the end. And that ends the ice okay, age. John, and that's I... the, that's the end of the day. John, and that's, I, so that's it. What you're saying is the first ice age stopped because a fictional video game character. Yeah. Turned the heating back on. John, basically. Can yeah. I just say a problem here? Right. So two things. First of all, in the video, like this is, this could be the plot of horizon three. All right, John, Horizon Frozen Future, Horizon 3, Frozen Future, where flipping Ashley Birch has to, like, save the world by turning the volcanoes back. John, on. I know, yeah. right, from, from speaking to you a lot over the many years, that you're an intelligent person, and I have a lot of respect for you. And I know, during the podcast, that you Can put we, it on... Can someone just clip I, that quickly? I, I, just I, clip that. I know, during the podcast, you put it on it, but, you know, you exaggerate, you <laughs> stupid, you for comic effect. But here's the problem, right? I, at this point, it's seeping into my actual opinion of you. <laughs> it is, it is. I'm, I'm slowly the dumbing Matt I am down. I'm actively thinking, John's a fucking idiot. Like, <laughs> because it's just, it's so pervasive. It's just oozing out of everything. You know? I, 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 <laughs> yeah, but you know the real downer of this is I literally, I'm just sitting there going, I don't know what the point of pus is. <laughs> I'm not I'm sitting there going, it must be just uh, like yeah. I'm just the I'm just the Socrates of this group, all right? I show up and I say, I don't know anything. And then I ask you guys questions and you suddenly realise you don't know anything either. I'm literally Socratic methoding your asses right now. Puss? Say you just got fucking Socrates. Puss? I think you're more like Cockrates. That's what I, uh, I think you Look, Puss, Socrates is already clearly implies like teasing. Like the implication was already there. Uh-huh. Okay, can I? Yes, yes Matt. Pus is a buildup of dead white blood cells that form when the body's immune system responds to an infection. It's blood. You were right, Matt. Well, that's oh not. Oh my God, Matt was right. It's blood. White um, blood cells. It's blood in it. The word blood is in white blood cells. It's like a third. I mean, yeah, but letters. I wouldn't count plasma as blood. Like, it's, it's literally a third. Exactly. It's five out of fifteen. That's thirty-three percent blood. Okay, sure. Why not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's one thing he knows about. What well on, John? Yeah. Proud of you. No, Matt got that one right first time. We were sceptical, but Matt got it right. Yeah, I'm learning so much today. I'm learning about pus. I'm learning... About, I mean, I've seen a lot of it coming out my fucking foot. No, you've seen I, blood like, coming out of your fucking foot. Yeah, it that's all, the red all, one. That That's the other source. I got a pus the toe fell off, but... Um, it looks all right. It looks like it's just a big burn on there now. It's fine. <laughs> all, I can, all I can say in my head is the image of you sat in on the floor in your kitchen... Um, <laughs> looking exhausted with your leg up and go, oh, <laughs> that's just blood splurts out and you go, oh, that's what's supposed to happen. <laughs> yeah, I've just found another map of volcanoes oh, here fuck that, me. Centers oh. the, that centers the Pacific Ocean rather than, you know, centering uh, in the kind of the more... Well, yeah, the because that's the most geologically maps. active part exactly. of the world. But like when you, fr- when you, when you center the Pacific Ocean like that, you, you kind of feel very worried for Hawaii. Because they are just surrounded. It is just nothing John, but volcanoes John, and fault lines John, around them. You just think sooner John, or later, they are fucked. John. Yeah. What is Hawaii made from? How did Hawaii come into existence, John? <laughs> I'm pretty confident it itself <laughs> is a volcano, but it seems to be surrounded yes. by other volcanoes. Yes. Like it's like, you know, a cult leader of the volcano cult. <laughs> I will say, sorry, like they're all sorry, just kind of you know, like you know, I've got a fucking interject because this is the funniest shit. On if you actually, like, you know, answers. if you walked, in, if you walked into a big empty room and there was one person standing in the center and everyone else was standing in a perfect circle around them, you'd think, oh shit, that 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 guy in the middle, that's 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 the guy to watch. He's he's gonna do something important. After, da- and interesting. after Daniel, that's fucking Hawaii. After it's Dan- a volcano in a circle of volcanoes that are just surrounding it, just kind of chanting just, in Latin. Just very briefly, right. Daniel, before you make your point, there is a lot of debate again among volcanologists about how Hawaii isn't on a fault line at all. It's right in the middle of a load of fault lines, and it's weird that there's volcanoes there, and it must have been a bit of an oddity for a volcano to pop up in the middle of nowhere. Um but that is a thing that can happen. There is the a... chosen one. Sure, fine. Go on, Daniel. <laughs> so I I went on Quora, which is you know Yahoo Answers, but for people who can spell. Um, and I typed in what would happen if all the volcanoes stopped, and I found what would happen if all the volcanoes on Earth disappeared or stopped erupting. Okay. And then a guy called Colin Payne, who's a registered California architect who has two point seven thousand. Yeah. 
2.7 thousand answers, and this is the not a volcano answer. architecture, just no. a normal kind. Normal okay. kind. So he knows about structure. He knows about design. I don't think that's important. Uh, he's got 2.7. He's answered two and a half, fucking and a half thousand things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He says the Earth would blow up like a balloon and ultimately pop. <laughs> 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 I choose to be- I like that's an even dumber take than mine. It I is. like that this architect has an even dumber but take than clearly, my he, one. But the way it's written, it sounds so confident. <laughs> <laughs> I like there's a comma around ultimately as well. It's, it's good. Just in case you need to. Yeah. John, do you. He knocks for commas so you understand that. Yeah, have you spent a lot of time, John, on center. Yahoo Answers and Quora Answers just like answering random shit that you know nothing about? Because maybe that would yeah. be Honestly, I feel like, you know, one day when I'm retired, I'm going to get a ga- great deal of joy just going on stuff like whatever the future Quora is and just confidently answering questions I've no idea about, <laughs> but just doing it very confidently. <laughs> You would as well. You'd be like, I've got a degree from Oxford, don't you know? I would have, yeah. I would just, I I'd want, just kind of, you know, I'd just kind be, of, you you'd know. You'd be on Fox News being like, Oxford, Oxford graduate says Earth will pop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're I think I'd have a great job. deal of fun with that, yes. That's my that's my one takeaway from this. I'm glad you're not a plumber because you'll be like, what's this one do? Oh, it's a, it's a pressure valve, is it? Well, we're going to turn that off. They're not necessary. Let's glue these fucking shut. <laughs> and then uh, the house would blow up like a balloon and ultimately pop. Yep. <laughs> but that's, that Precisely. is what happened to my radiator. That is what happened to my radiator after Oh, all. shit, yeah. Tell the story of your radiator. It's a good story. I don't think it's that interesting a story. It's a good story. Well, I don't know. It kind of, it kind of meet, it's a kind of a crossover between a volcano story and a I plumbing story. I don't think it story. is. It, elect- it sinks really nicely to I, what we a, were just discussing. Yeah, it's a really localised well, 2012. Well, no. A really, I have, really I have tiny, a it's a really radiator. tiny volcano occurred and that's on. flat. I'm in my fucking kitchen, right? Why do I smell smoke? Oh, it must be the smoked tofu. I mean, oh no, but it's not. There's molten metal coming out of the thing onto the wooden floor and it's burning the wooden floor and now I have a pile of molten metal. That's the story. How long does molten metal just take to cool on its own? Depends on how hot it is. Obviously. <laughs> what, a, what a fucking question is that? Like, I've just kind of got a view on my, like in the alien films, where like, you know, the acid that the aliens got in them, like, get spit out. Like, you know, it would melt a hole in the floor and it'd just keep going. You'd like, you know, you'd peer through and there'd be like people in the floor and the floors below, like peering back up comically. And it would just kind of go all the way that down to the bottom. depends on what metal it is. Metal. I'm not sure what metal is. I think it's solder, but it's a bit too much solder. So I don't know if it is solder. Maybe it might, is it lead? What's the melting point of lead? Isn't that quite low? My brain says that's low and I don't know why I'd know that. It might be. Possibly it was on University it's, Challenge. It's 327 degrees, point. which is relatively low for a metal. Sometimes I know random facts just because I like I enjoy watching Uni Challenge because you learn some really random shit. So is that where you get the rest Challenge. of your information from the wrong ganchers on University Challenge? <laughs> <laughs> on occasion, yes. Great. I can but, imagine Joe watching University Challenge being like, well, they got that one wrong, even if the answer's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's really Incongruent. Like, see, no, Claire, Claire and I watch it competitively. We we actually genuinely see who, who which of the two of us can get the most right answers out of University Challenge. It's great fun. No! Sorry, you, sorry, Kagan, I watched you watch fucking... Uh, uh, only Connect. Only Connect for literally, what was it, 13 hours straight? I was sick and it helps my ADHD brain calm down. That's so not it. Claire and I watch Only Connect too. That's also fun. Only Connect's great. Wait, there's an Only Connect 2 now? Oh, shit. Mm. Anyway. Um, Unfortunately, in line with the current uh, internet zeitgeist, Only Connect has been replaced by uh, a Wordle variant. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Just... Octus Factor Sector Durdle. Exactly. <laughs> Every single five-letter word. Only Knurdle will be, will be starting soon on BBC Two. There was a, a Wordle TV show in America in the 80s. A quiz show that was called, I think, Lingo. Is what I've got in my head. Lingo. Lingo. I swear this is a thing. I should look this up. Lingo. Lingo TV show. Uh, 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 1988. Oh, that's good. Apparently it was an ITV mm. one from 2012. 2021. Hmm. No, the American one. The original American one. Yeah, but the original American one is they had to guess five letter words. And they... Uh, yeah, if they got it right, it was green. If it was in the wrong place, it was yellow. And it's ex- it's just Wordle. Wordle is just lingo again. Thankfully, and the apparently- New York Times have bought it. And now no one else can do it. It's not allowed. 
Ah, oh, apart yeah. from the TV show on ITV, apparently. Yeah, no, but aside the, from that, it's not And the 10 million allowed. variants there are pop. Yeah, no, it's yeah. not. The New York, like, the the, New York the, the Times. Wor the Worldle, the Hurdle, no, but I, I the Quordle, right. the, the Lord of the Rurdle. The New York Rurdle. Times spent a lot of money on it, and it must have been for a reason. Oh, my God, there's a Lingo official world game app for the ITV show for the phone, <laughs> which... <did> <laughs> and it's just Wordle. Play the free mobile game based on the ITV format, nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> it's not similar to someone's any going, other Someone's going to take this to court at some point. It's going to be great. I mean, actually, when did Wordle come out? Wordle app. Well, it must have been less than a year ago. Yeah. Six years ago. Time means nothing anymore. Yeah, it, could be a long, it could be like Among Us, which just was like under the radar for like three years, and then it just got hugely popular all, all of a sudden. No, because the guy started it for like his partner during lockdown, so it can't have been that long. Wordle. <laughs> Okay, Wordle Original 1.0, 24th of April 2016. Told you. Okay, fine. Six years ago. <laughs> there was now the, the, it was updated in 2016, and there was a huge gap, and then it was updated again in 2022. Oh. So that's so some, oh, yeah, something to do with with you know the lockdown monarchy monarchy. Fuck it. You get the point. And the Lingo app was made in 2021. So it, it has copied Wordle. Formally, that's how it works. Yeah, but Lingo, the American TV show, was from 1988. Oh, everything's copy ever copy, isn't it? Oh, fucking modern, <laughs> modern, modern things these it's days. Just it's all it's gorgeous fucking back in my day. <clears throat> that's the yeah, why can't we all just play catchphrase and going for gold? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, uh, you know, fucking Taskmaster's back, though. Oh shit! I haven't seen the new episode. I'm watching. I'm rewatching New Zealand. Have you seen that Taskmasters launched their own subscription service? What? No. What? They've got an app. I know that. Yeah. No. They've launched a subscription service. It's like it's just got Taskmaster on it. On what? Just an online internet Taskmaster Super Max or something. Is that the name? Wait. I've, I'm gonna. Yes, Taskmaster Super Max Plus. What? Which... It's but it's free! <laughs> Seasons 1 to 8 available now. Season 9 coming soon. But I can watch uh, it for free. Oh my god, they have a Taskmaster clock. It's so... so. Yeah, it basically, it's just... You can watch Taskmaster for several Would you a like month. a Taskmaster clock? I, I have the Taskmaster clock. The one with Alex Horn's legs. <laughs> what? His legs? His legs, are the, his, his legs are the hands of the, the clock. Oh, God. I don't want to see it at, like, the happy time. <laughs> 10 to fucking 10 is going to be... I mean, it's, show, wait, it's showing it at 25 to 4, which, you know, it looks like he's running. Oh, very nice. But I, I mean, like... the, the thing about Taskmaster Supermax Plus, which um, is basically for people that can't get Taskmaster elsewhere. Like, if you get it for free, fuck it. But they are going to be adding all the foreign versions of Taskmaster to it, including it would be the first time you could properly get Taskmaster New Zealand in this country, oh. which is the best Taskmaster. Mm. Yeah, I went there. Mm. It's the best Taskmaster. It's still very good. It's really good. I'm, still, no, I'm not quite, I'm not quite yeah. there with, with it. Oh, you can get Taskmaster masks. They're called Maskmaster. Fucking great. <laughs> I mean, I'm just shocked. It's chilling stuff. They've got a lot of weird... Stuff. I wanted to talk about Gilbert Gottfried for a while because he's like one of my favourite comedians and I was genuinely upset midway through my first live stream back after three mm. and a half weeks being away. Um, because he's... he's he, had, he was like a really decent person who told really inappropriate jokes. And I appreciate and respect that because it's, it's basically me. But do you know what my favourite thing about Gilbert Gottfried is? My absolute favourite thing about him is? Go on. Go on. He told the very first 9-11 joke. Surely it's... you can't verify that. Other people must have just done without it really being recorded or something. Well, I don't think it was recorded. It was just—it was literally just at like a, a, a club or something. A few weeks. I think actually it was at a roast. Fuck, was it, a ro was it Hugh Hefton's roast? It doesn't matter. Um, he did it on September 29th. 2001. So you're telling that me... That would have been the first. Yeah, People outside of no America would have been doing jokes. No, no, joke. like, yeah, the first professional comedian to do a 9-11 Outside joke. of America, lots of people would have done it faster than that. I don't think so, because... Do you not fucking remember that time? It was fucking... But he got fucking annihilated for it. Like, prop, the crowd really fucking hated it. 
It was such a, it's such a, and then he went on and did a nine and a half minute version of the Aristocrats, and they won them back. I cannot believe that you, you that there is there is a two week period in which nobody made even did, the mildest joke anywhere in the world. Did Norm Macdonald not make one? Because Norm Macdonald made a lot of nine eleven jokes. Yeah, but I think a lot. Of, it, it, it was, it really was. Because I've, I've listened to a lot of comedians talk about it, like, and they were like, Gilbert Goffrey kind of made it. Like Gilbert Goffrey tested the waters of when is too soon because everyone says like when's too soon, and it turns out in America that was too soon. Like that was legitimately universally acknowledged as too soon. I just need to say, by the way, I searched Norm Macdonald nine eleven, and the second yeah. thing that came up was a Gilbert Goffrey video. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wonderful! Absolutely wonderful. But yeah, I I really enjoyed. Um, yeah. I, I, I love the... the I, I, he's a great guy. Great comedian. And I think it was way too fucking early. But I also think that was... Uh, you gotta do that shit. Sorry, this, there's, a, they... there's a video. Someone saying, you know, just one of the... Like, some random news thing that's been like, you know, he's died. And in the description, it's like, put every tag. Rather yeah. than the tags. And boy, it's... It's a... Wow. <laughs> 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 Gilbert Gottfried as God, Gilbert Gottfried Aladdin, Gilden Gottfried stand up, Gilden Gottfried Bill Cosby, Gilden Gottfried <laughs> Elden Ring for some reason. Um, <laughs> Gilden Gottfried. Imagine searching those two. Sir. Well, yeah, Gilden Gottfried Ghostbusters, Gilden Gottfried Harry Potter, Gilden Gottfried Hugh. Hugh Hef- Go- no, but Go- there's Gilden Gottfried Hugh Elden Hefner nine eleven. There's all one sentence for some reason. Oh, so it was Hugh Hefner's roast. Yeah, I paid Gilbert Gottfried to voice Argo is one for some reason. <laughs> like what? Why? I, th- Why? I really want to know what Gilbert Gottfried thought about Elden Ring. <laughs> I that- don't know if we would have got much of a chance, I'm honest. <laughs> um, <laughs> he definitely didn't beat it at the time. Oh no, Elden Ring. Why, he's like one of those people where if you make a really dark joke, now he's dead. You know he would have fucking loved it. So go right ahead, people. There's Gottfried. There's a, a boss called Godfrey. 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 God, they're all There's called fucking, fucking several of them. <laughs> I don't know. I've not played the fucking thing for more than a few hours. Wait, do some people think that a boss in Elder Ring is based on Gilbert Godfrey? Probably. <laughs> the, the bosses in this game are uh, scary fingers, ladies with swords, and the most annoying Jewish guy that we could find. Admittedly, That's did, the three. I did see a thing yesterday that was someone got calling three Elden Ring a really funny Margit game. three people or some very close variant thereupon. Yeah. There's, uh, there's that boss <laughs> I know. Margit versus Margot versus no. Ned Godfrey no versus yeah. what's Godfrey. The name? What's the name of the versus... big dude on the tiny, tiny horse? I don't know. I haven't seen a big dude uh, on the tiny horse. That's Radan. Okay, I don't know who that is. Don't spoil it. <laughs> I'm not there yet. I'm only 40 hours in. I've barely scratched the His fucking surface. His name's Rodan. It's, it's fine. Thank you. Well, that sounds Thank redundant. You, He's literally brought up in the intro sequence. It's not a spoiler. His name's Redan. Um, oh, R-A-D-A-H-N. No, not like the Godzilla one. No, that's Rodan. Yeah, well, yeah, that's what... Yeah. How do you spell it? R-A-D-A-H-N. A-H-N. Redan. Ah, okay, there it is. Redan, hold the ring. Oh, yeah, he is. Look at his tiny horse. Oh yeah, he's the guy from the trailers. He learned how to use gravity magic, so his 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 horse could support his horse could support his weight. He loved his horse so much. Oh wait, is he, oh, so he's massive then. That's yeah, but he's riding a normal sized horse. <laughs> 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 he, he rides this tiny horse, but he was too heavy for the horse, so he learned gravity magic to make himself lighter, <laughs> so that he could ride around on his little horse. And he didn't have to stop. Genuinely, using his horse the horse is so a much. normal horse, but he is a giant. He's yeah. <laughs> But he uses gravity magic to, like, float or be lighter or something so that he can ride around on his tiny, tiny horse. It's fucking ridiculous, and I love it. I'll give him that. That's quite funny, actually. I'd, also, I'd like to point right. out, just sorry, just one last thing on the Gilbert Godfrey thing. He did tell this joke in New York. Like, this wasn't... Uh, he didn't just sell it somewhere okay, else in America. Okay, now, the first comedian in New York, I would buy that was the first. <laughs> yeah. Yes. First comedian anywhere in the world? No, I don't believe that. He he recorded it later by saying it was the most anyone has ever lost a crowd. <laughs> well, yeah, well, it's good, good on him for trying. Wow. Also, uh, I've got I've got terrible news, deli- which has been delivered in a fascinating way. Uh-huh. Out of interest, I I searched how many deaths do volcanoes cause. Uh-huh. Jesus Christ. And more than seven, uh, more than two hundred and seventy thousand people have been killed directly or indirectly by volcanic activity during the last five hundred years. 
Yeah. Fun. Yeah. People it sounds like a really big number, but then they add on the end during the last during the last five hundred. Oh, actually, that's that's quite a long period of time for only two hundred seventy thousand people to die. Uh, okay. Actually, that's quite that's okay. Uh, uh, there is a Wikipedia page called "Humor Based on the September 11 Attacks," which is a very specific Wikipedia page. Um, <laughs> but uh, but there's a researcher uh, that found that jokes about the attacks began the day after. Uh, someone found jokes on a Dutch website a day later. Um, well, the thing is, some people respond to tragedy with dark humour. Noti- That's how some people deal with tragedy and crisis. Well, that was what they recently Which makes me into. think there would have been... Some people would have told, you know, dark jokes almost immediately because that's how some people process crisis and trauma. Same. And then the, the, the next sentence is, a notable early public attempt at 9-11 humour was by Gilbert Gottfried. Just a few weeks after you the attacks, it, yeah. during a comedy rush for Hugh Hefner at the Friars Club, the crowd did not respond well to Gottfried's 9-11 gag. One audience member did, yelled... Do we know what the gag was? One, yeah. Well, one audience member at the club yelled out, too soon, which has since become a common response to jokes told in the immediate wake of tragedies. <laughs> was that the origin of too soon? Gilbert Gottfried oh. then improvised that's the almost culturally more interesting. Routine, which uh, it released a great deal of tension and got a rousing applause. <laughs> <laughs> so he just talked about the most horrific dark shit he possibly could and that made everything feel better. Yeah, well, yeah, he just did, well, he did that and then he did the, arist- they just did an aristocrat. Like, it's, yeah. Well, honestly, I think if if that was the you know literally the origin of the expression too soon to respond to jokes delivered after an event, that's actually that's almost culturally more interesting than the joke itself. Yeah, yeah no, that's yeah, I agree with that. That's I, I actually I find that more interesting. Wait, I, I, do you want to hear the joke? Yeah. Do, um, do we? Are we yeah. sure? It's not bad. Like it's co- co- cover your ears if this might upset you. <laughs> Go on. Should I do a Gilbert Gottfried? How do you do Gilbert Gottfried is something I really, I'd love to be out impersonate, but there's literally it's no very, one else. I, I wouldn't try. I think it's not going to fly. Four I have to cock. catch a fly. <laughs> <laughs> no, he said, I have to catch a flight to California. I can't get a direct flight. They said I have to stop at the Empire State Building first. That's quite mild, isn't it? It's quite mild. It's that's, such that's a, a, that's the thing. It's that's such a, a relatively mild, mild joke. Yeah. Such a mild joke. And it got the biggest fucking boos and shouts. And yeah. Oh, there's, yeah, you can understand how that's the joke you choose to test the waters there. Because that's pretty much as mild as you're ever going to be able to make a joke There's about a that. quote here from him in an interview. It was a couple of weeks after 9-11. There was a weird feeling in New York. People were walking around in the days. I was at the roast of Hugh Hefner and I just wanted to be the first person to make a really poor taste joke about 9-11. <laughs> it was impromptu. I don't remember thinking about it beforehand. I said, I have to leave early tonight. I have a flight to California. Content direct flight, blah, blah, blah. I don't think anyone lost their audience bigger than I did at that point. They were booing and hissing. One guy said, too soon. He was just a face in the crowd, but now I wish I knew who it was because it can't became part of the language. Oh, yeah. There you go, then. I mean, the it's like interesting. Guy. Yeah, we need to find that guy. That, that, that guy's guy? made a huge impact on language. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, he's Russian. Oh, too soon. Too soon. Sorry, it's just a... Fine. Sharp. When I do a joke um, about Russia's doing well in their war. Should we, should we talk about their war? Russia doing well, aren't they? Nah. It's like watching Hitler fail to invade Poland. That's my favourite review of it so far. It's Sorry. absolutely fucking... In this article, collapsed. he's talking about making jokes about the Challenger explosion and oh, the yeah, Japanese that's tsunami. <laughs> Wow. He actually went to space to do the Challenger ones. It was you know, on the National Space Station. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, my oh God. Oh, my God. Jesus, the well, last sentence I can't actually read out because it's... Ooh, that's bad. Please, please don't. Read it, read it, read it, read it, read it. I remember... I, okay, I'm a bit... I'm as hypocritical as anyone else. I remember when all these stories came out about Mel Gibson, a woman cop had stopped him. He called her sugar tits and asked her, are you a Jew? And said the Jews were responsible for all the wars in the world. Then news came out about his girlfriend. He smacked her when he was holding a baby, told her... Yeah, I can't read that. It's a Mel Gibson quote. Um, it's a Mel Gibson quote. It's a Mel Gibson vo- quote that involves rape and the M word simultaneously. Um, <laughs> yeah, classic Gibson. Or on cunt, which for obviously Americans is top tier. Um, and after all that, oh, yeah. I was like, wait, he said what about the Jews? That's the last line in this Gilbert Gottfried article. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, oh, fuck, what's happening? Good old Gilbert Gottfried. It's an article Gilbert you wrote in Vulture in 2016. Heart, heart of gold, absolutely filthy mouth. It was a wonderful combination. He's one of those, yeah, one of those great American comics. There's not many. I'll be honest, America. You need a. You had Louis C.K. Oh, there's apparently. So well, did, it? did you ever? Um, there's that. There's that a Seth MacFarlane film, uh, A Million Ways to Die in the West. Um, I've never seen it. It's an interesting film because it's kind of that. You know how the Orville Seth MacFarlane just going. I really want like Star Trek, and I want to work with people who 
were on Star Trek, yeah. basically. A Million Ways to Die in the West was kind of the first foray into that because it was just a lot of people he wanted to work with. Like, he, it's, it's set in the West and it's just him wandering about and he walks down the road and he just sees an open door and he walks in and fucking Doc Brown's there with a DeLorean. And he's like, <laughs> and it, he, he just wanted to do a scene with him and the DeLorean in it is his. It's Seth MacFarlane's own one because he's a massive nerd. <laughs> but the reason I bring it up is because Gilbert Gottfried's in it and he plays Abe Lincoln. And, of course and, he does. But he, Seth MacFarlane made this big statement that apparently the day he was on set, it, he was improving. Gilbert Gottfried was improving the Abe Lincoln thing. And apparently that it took the whole day to do this one scene because he kept making the entire cast laugh and they had to keep redoing takes, yeah. which is top notch. Have you ever seen, there was a, a Netflix show, it's kind of insufferable. I'm not a big roasts fan, it's kind of insufferable. They, do, they did a, a historical roasts where they basically roasted um, famous uh, people in history. Sort of it's fit, a bit you know. easy to be honest. You can you can roast most people in history just by judging them by modern standards fairly easily. Okay, it's a so, bit of a soft target. So um, Gilbert Gottfried played Hitler on the roast of Anne Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> John, it's a limit there. But there's a, there's a wonderful line. You'll never see Gilbert Gottfried laugh harder if, when um, Anne Frank gets back on, gets onto the stage and says that you can tell we absolutely thrashed Hitler because he's currently being played by the loudest, most obnoxious Jew we could find. It's <laughs> <laughs> always been my way of describing Gilbert Gottfried. Cause it, that's nice, anymore. at least. Yes, yeah. that's nice. That's <laughs> not, John's, got, John's hit a limit here. John's in his head going, cut, 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 cut all this. <laughs> I mean, John, Man, take out about half John, this. John was talking earlier about sensitivity training, and here we are. Uh, dear, I mean, is that, is that brilliant? Is that brilliant? Podcast. I can't remember what it, I, can't, I think it was on his. I don't know if it was part. Yeah, Norm Macdonald did that brilliant joke where he'd like bring up, he'd bring up nine eleven, he'd make the other person laugh about it, yeah. and he'd be like, "Why are you laughing about nine <laughs> eleven? Why are you doing?" And then they'd, they'd awkwardly try and like go, "Well, actually, I'm not." I'm not and keep I, pushing it. Have you seen Stuart Lee's opening nine eleven bit? Oh no. It's incredible. He's, he has basically comes out with some music on and he gets people up on stage and he's all dancing. He's having a good time. He gives them party poppers and he counts them down and they all pop it over him. And he's like, Ehh! and he's got like, oh, he's covered in all the party popper stuff. And then he just kind of gets the mic and goes, uh, on September 11th, 2001. <laughs> just, and he's just covered in all this fucking confetti and shit. I mean, that's that's basic. I mean, I, I, one of my favourite jokes you've, you've ever that's done. That's a good to- total inversion of expectation. Well, no, fine. it's, it's yeah. you know, I remember the video we recall with Jay? And it's the, it's the I you know, <laughs> I'm fine. Like, <laughs> I think that is the funniest joke Genuine, I've ever done. It is, and it's, but it's that kind of just like stark contrast, which is really it's funny. It's the horribly, it, what made that joke is the, Awkward pause, going straight into the exact same celebratory music after Shay goes, I'm not. <laughs> Kid was the funniest fucking oh, thing. Yeah. Absolutely lovely. Mwah, beautiful. But like, I love <laughs> comedy like that. So, I, you know, I remember I was in New York once in my life and it was on the 10th anniversary of 9-11. Oh, fun. Yeah. I could, I'll tell you when you were in New York then. Yeah, it's at the t- 2011. Yeah, wow, what a... Uh, yeah, what ha- that would story checks out, yeah. <laughs> also, the UN happened to be in session the week I was there. It was a busy, busy thing. Wow. Yeah, I couldn't get around. It was very hard. Most things were closed. No- I, thought, I thought you were saying it was busy for you there, like you were after <laughs> yeah, speaking to yeah. the UN. No, it was just like, you know, because everyone's on edge and every world leader's fucking there. And like, I feel like if you're in the UK, people in the UK, for all the faults I have about Britain, which are many... Um, yeah. UK comedy and rising by the day. Yeah, but UK comedy is quite funny. Like, it, like it, anything that ever happens, someone's joking about it immediately. Yeah. Yes, and I think you have to these days just to get ahead of social media. Yeah, but fuck me, in America, I just remember being there, and not a single ever. It was like the most reverent. Everyone had a yeah. fucking American flag on the thing, and they were on the fucking hearts. And I'm like, gee, oh, it's just exhausting. It's just I can see. So like, even ten years later. You know, I, so him doing that joke, fucking like over two weeks, fucking else, why he didn't get murdered? <laughs> <laughs> What's wild you? about Charm, it? You know, he he won the country back. He he won the we won the the it back like with the crowd. Sorry, not the country. The country hated him for a while, but he won the crowd back by just telling him an even worse joke. He, well, yeah, <laughs> but it wasn't at their did, expense, yeah. which is America. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it was uh, yeah. This this podcast, by the way, is going to be called 9-11 Jokes. And I'm just excited for that. 
No, just, no, it's not. I it's going to be a volcano-related joke. It's gonna be We're going to focus on the volcano <laughs> business. Nine eleven. How jokes. about Vol- both in the same thing? What if nine eleven wasn't a volcano instead? <laughs> what if nine eleven was just a big volcano? <laughs> the Taliban orchestrated a big just volcano. Just going to be a volcano. Like, like, it was an inside like, job. Like, George Bush, like, <laughs> right? He filled that volcano with cement. He did. <laughs> the volcano. Volcano's got can in it. See, that's, that's an easy pun in there somewhere. <laughs> easy pun. <laughs> I like, no, I, yeah, so Bush did a volcano. It's like populist the beginning where you could just summon a volcano in the middle oh, of the city. So something I quite like about these podcasts is clearly in the past several years, me and Daniel have definitely checked out of giving a fuck. <laughs> but John definitely just... hasn't. <laughs> and whenever we do, John's like, no, don't do that. <laughs> Just cancel me. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be like J.K. Rowling, who no one listens to and doesn't have a job anymore. Like, she doesn't have a job anymore because fucking Fantastic Beats has gone up the swanny, isn't it? Yay. Uh, one but I love... Look at all those cancel people who you never hear from anyway. I've not heard from Elon Musk or J.K. Rowling or all of these people who don't shut the app. Oh, yeah. I, I, did, I didn't hear anything about Elon Musk yesterday. Not, not a thing. He wasn't on every not front page. Thing. Not Wasn't on every front page thing at all. About that little nerdy cunt. No. And he's sucking. Oh, careful. Hang on. He might try and buy the podcast off of us. He's insulting too much. Sure. <laughs> <But> how much? <laughs> you know what? I'd consider it. 50p. I'll uh, take well, it. <laughs> maybe not. I'll take it for a dairy egg. Cadbury's well, the, nice, the nice thing about people who are that rich is they've probably completely lost track with what things are supposed to cost. So we could probably get 100 million. <laughs> Just think that's pocket change. If you're listening, Elon. Uh, yeah. We'll take it. 100 million each yeah. or we'll share. We'll share it. Fuck it. Yeah, 100, 100 million each. Like, we're not greedy. Oh, okay. Yeah. We'll take we'll take 33 million each. 100 million All each, right. 32 million each. You know yeah, what I like about million. that? We we have the rich celebrities have listened to the podcast before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you're listening, I don't know, fucking uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, if you're listening, let Elon know. You're all together. You all know each other. Sarah Michelle Geller, if you're listening, let Elon know. Um, yeah. chat, I want to put. So I said chat. And and for everyone else who's on like you know Patreon or whatever, um, don't worry. Starting next month, we'll start the dog cast or something. <laughs> T Pain, if you're still listening, because T Pain used to listen to the podcast in his mansion on surround sound. That's so weird. I know. T-Pain's that is very strange. Uh, He's a very like. I love um, that op- the opening to the Lonely Island. The boat. I'm on a boat. Where it's, he's deciding who he's going to take on the boat, and he just says T Pain, and it just pans over T Pain, and that silly and he goes cool. And I just, that makes me laugh <laughs> so hard every time. And I think he's yeah, he's a bloke who doesn't take so seriously. So yeah, of course he'd listen to this shit. If you if uh, we'll do we'll even do you a deal, limited time offer. If you buy the podcast for the next seven days, we'll sell it to you for fifty million. Best value. Yeah, best value. <laughs> That's seven days only. Act now. There's only one podcast. Limited supply. It's the NFT of podcasts. We'll give you yeah, a exactly. podcast <laughs> NFT. We're minting one podcast <laughs> NFT. Oh, oh, did you see? Did 50 you see, million pounds. Did you see how much by now. Jack's first tweet sold for? The NFT of it. Oh, I saw yes, this. Yes, so I saw this. It, it, no, 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 it's no, priced recently. up to 0.001% of its original value. Yeah, it was It was up for $49 million and it sold for $280. $280. $280. I, I like nothing more Wait. than a bigger fool scam where someone finds out they're actually the biggest fool. Wait, hang fool. on. Sorry. Yeah. W- wasn't it originally bought for like... 2.9 it was bought, million it was bought for It was for bought originally. for 2.9 million and that person was like, well, now's the time to sell it. <laughs> And they sold. They offered it for forty nine million, and it sold for two hundred and eighty dollars. I lo- I love nothing more than people realizing they were the biggest fool after all. It's the best. <laughs> it thing. wasn't two hundred and eighty dollars. Nothing better than someone thinking, "Oh, I'm getting into the pyramid nice and early," and realizing, "Oh shit, wait, no." I will say it was. <laughs> it, it turns out I'm the sucker who's left with nothing. It wasn't two hundred eighty dollars. <laughs> it was six thousand eight hundred dollars, which is still. <laughs> Still, I saw it was two hundred and eighty dollars. Oh, this article says the highest bid was six thousand eight hundred. Oh, that one might get pulled though, because I saw it was two hundred and eighty. Yeah, that's hilarious. Fuck you. The NFTs. thing is, even if you say, well, $280 oh. is like still more than worth. Yes, but you've also demonstrated that the value of something has dropped to zero point zero one percent of what it orig- of what it was originally purchased for, which is generally a bad sign for the state of the market. Yeah, why well, NFTs were yeah. scam? Who knew? Who knew? Who, Who knew? knew that clear scam was a scam? I'm just, I, I just love nothing more 
the the bigger fools turning out to be the biggest fools. Ah. So, right. <laughs> so good. Yeah, but the problem is though that at the end of the day, someone, some asshole, still got rich off it. Yeah, whoever sold it initially got two point nine million out of it. Yeah. Because they're yeah. at the top of the pyramid. Yeah. And they yeah, but the thing is, down. it's actually you, you a reverse pyramid. I'm, I'm pretty confident that anybody who did the business of minting the NFT and got $2.9 million in Ethereum, I think that's the currency they use, that person was not the sensible, prudent financial person. He said, well, I'm going to take my 2.9 and I'm going to cash it out into an actual real currency and I'm going to invest in something sensible and buy myself a big house and I'm going to retire. That person immediately reinvested that Ethereum into dumber scams yeah, probably. and probably lost it all. They're probably involved in those um, the the NFT games that there are now. Because there are there are a big pile of people who were like, oh yeah, I got into crypto super early, and now I own ten million dollars in crypto, but they never cashed out. Wait, what, they just kept putting it to double double scams, and it slowly got whittled away. What was the thing the other day that like it was an NFT game that failed, but people spent like loads of money on it? Oh, the Formula oh, One. All games. of them. That, yeah, that's that's all of them that you're describing. Video. That's oh, literally all of them. No, there's a, there's a specific Formula One game that's just shut its doors and it's been like, all right, thanks for spending upwards of like three hundred thousand dollars on these NFTs. It's it's done now. Bye. Yeah, Amazing. I think you're referring to the like the the really dumb, stupid Pokemon ripoff that had the weird no, 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 Philippine was... secondary market that's collapsed. No, there was a, there's a, literally a Formula One game just shut down. It was literally a Formula One official time yeah. game, and they lost the license. And they were like, now oh, up well, the end. Do you wanna? Yeah, I got an email for, to uh, the Nike business email. Last month, actually, um, yeah. mm-hmm. from something called LOL Metaverse. <laughs> right. I'm going to read the what, email. like those LOL dolls that are everywhere? No, I thought it was that, but it's even worse. Um, we've been following Profit on YouTube. We believe we can make LOL Metaverse the next big NFT project. We are proud to la- launch the Lords of Lands, the first <laughs> rental generating NFT land metaverse. Now that's untrue. There have definitely been rent generating NFT stuff I mean, before. Lol is Pete the meta Molyneux's version of the one. futuristic medieval era ruled by the billionaires of the world called Lords who acquire the very scarce NFT lands. Where the future of entertainment, shopping, leisure, concerts, auctions, and sports will come together. We're creating the biggest utility in the NFT space yet by getting all the big, biggest music talents from across the world and making them perform in the metaverse to a global audience and creating an immersive shopping experience for its users. Um, the Wait, so price... it's just a shop that you have to buy land in. We're launching our first so. island, having only two thousand lords, one hundred <clears throat> one thousand five hundred forty nine normal lands, one thousand and eighty five premium lands, and three hundred fifty two celebrity neighboring lands. If you want a normal lands, <laughs> it costs zero point three Ethereum, premium zero point six Ethereum, and celebrity neighboring lands one Ethereum, which is like several grand. Let's um, have a look. One Ethereum is currently three thousand dollars. Yes. Um, and put there, but here's the thing, right? What they say is if you buy your land, you can then rent your land to other plebs for uh, yeah. 2% of the land value uh, at minimum. But sorry, 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 sorry. They've just said that their first island is there. So you can rent on the first island, but they are going to be adding more islands. So therefore yes. making it less scarce as time goes on. Yes, yes. Gen- generating secondary rental income markets is one of the weird things this does. Like, there was this this one I was mentioning where basically it's Pokemon, but you have to pay several thousand dollars to buy a team of Pokemon. But it's, rather than yeah, actually playing Pokemon, you can then lease out your Pokemon <laughs> to people who then have to share a percentage of their income <laughs> with you and treat Pokemon as a... Basically, like, rather play Pokemon, you're the asshole in the daycare centre who just stands there while other people play Pokemon with the Pokemon you raise and occasionally pay you for it. Sorry. See, what's really like, fun about these? played Pokemon and thought, I don't actually want to play this game. I want someone else to play this game for me while I stand there gaining passive income. Well, that's, that's the game for you. The, the thing is, uh, I, we did a, a show video on it. I can't remember what the game was. It was it was sort of a Pokemon-y top fucking thing. Oh, Do you yeah, remember, I remember it that was, one. Matt? I, I can look. I can find the video. <laughs> it was some awful shite. Um, so who gives a mm. shit? Um, but it was a, the, 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 I, when I looked into it more after I'd recorded the video irritatingly, I found out that basically the game's really popular in places like the Philippines. Yes, where, the Philippines create secondary markets because yeah. even the tiniest slither of that they can generate there of Ethereum is, is in local purchasing power, not terrible. 
Yeah. So it weirdly, like, these games have just in a matter of weeks created what feels like a very nightmarish dystopian scenario where rich people in America have become landlords to giant numbers of people in the Philippines who are desperately trying to make a living by playing a game that's not fun for eight hours a day. Yeah, and also which stuff just, like... Which if, feels like some form of, you know, real Black Mirror episode. Like, yeah, because they just developed to organically. In. You have to spend hundreds of dollars to buy into these games, and the le- yeah. longer it goes, the less likely you are to get that money back. There's just kind of feels like sort of thing Charlie Brooker just kind of tossed Axie out and said, no, nah, that's too dumb. That couldn't happen. Yeah, Axie why would that, why, How would there ever develop a market where thousands of people in the developing world would end up like playing a video game that's not fun for no reason for the sake of landlords in other countries that that can't exist as a point by the way when i searched lol um lol metaverse on dr go the first thing that came up was an article called how lol surprise dolls market to kids in the metaverse (laughs) and then i found the actual those fucking surprise dolls are everywhere man oh god there's one (laughs) Wow, total supply, tokenomics, there's a to- oh, there's only one trillion tokens allowed. No, no. I know, right? Basically, <laughs> oh no, that's only, totally, uh, what is that, about 200 for every person on Earth? Oh god, that's not a lot. Oh uh, no, I haven't, I haven't got any of mine yet, they're gonna run out. It's Every time I hear someone talk about NFTs or cryptocurrency, I think that bit in the office where Michael's clearly describing a pyramid scheme, but he's yeah. been explained it upside down. And then someone's like, this sounds like a get rich uh, quick scheme. And he's like, yes, this is a get rich quick scheme. You will get rich quick. I love that. Just not understanding how the world works. I mean, I don't understand most of this in the technical terms, but I hear like idiots make $10 million in a week. And I think, I kind of wish I could just do that just anonymously. But then I think like if I ever tried, it would be like that episode where Homer Simpson tries to set himself up as an internet help company, to set himself up with the internet for the first Sorry, time. Sorry, Bill Gates comes to his house and smashes it. I'm not, I'm not sure you have to worry about that. <laughs> well, isn't that the episode that ends with like a take on the prisoner and stuff and he gets sent to that island? Yes, that's goes... where it ends, but I just enjoy the earlier yeah. bits more where he tries to set up the internet help company and the comic book guy comes to him and describes a series of complicated problems. Homer just sits there blankly and after a moment's pause says, can I have some money now? <laughs> but that's the thing. I just kind of feel like that would be me trying to, trying to make the money out of NFTs. The most obnoxious NFT. thing about this, because most people do that thing where they go, oh, lots of other people are making money off, but I want to get a piece of the pie kind of thing. And you either have the people who are getting into it not knowing anything about it, which are the people being exploited, or the people who will sit there and go, actually, and they earnestly believe it's the future of the world. Yeah, and they're idiots. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, the, th- the rule is, if you hear about something and you're not normally listening to stuff like that, it's too fucking late. Well, it's like if the people are... who bought fucking GameStop stock after it was already in the fucking news. Yeah. Yeah. You know somebody who did that, don't you, Matt? Mm. Mm. <laughs> Matt did. I will say Matt didn't. Legitimately a friend of Matt's. Uh, yeah. What up? Mm. <laughs> Stupid! It's stupid. <laughs> Get into it. He lives like, in a box now. Oh, just stupid. I'm sorry. I've got the fucking stupid Axel Infinity guide open as well. It's a long. How do I compute my starting that's cost it, for Axel Infinity? Infinity. Yeah, that's that's the saying, dumb. Yeah. That's the dumb, n- incredibly boring Pokemon ripoff. Yeah. So you've got a choice with these NFT games and stuff. Either you can play a game for fun, or you can play a game that's not fun for a very small amount of money. Sorry, yeah, this this, this game markets it as or a free to play game. Potentially, but the, the thing is, you will also lose money if you get in too late. You won't make your initial uh, investment back because it can't come back because that's how these systems work. Mm. There's no way that a system like this could actually be supported long term. You can't generate infinite you know, money from nothing years forever. Ago. These, these are these are people who are playing games for eight hours a day in the hope that they will go on to make a profit. And I don't know. I, I, I've just kind of. I've been looking into this, and there's, there is actually an alternative economic system where you can do something for eight hours a day <laughs> and much more reliably end up with some money at the end of it. Yeah. Meh. It's called a job. Meh. Yes. And I've, there's, 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 there's a few of them. The fun thing is, in about. places like the Philippines and the places that these games are specifically targeting, there aren't many jobs. Mm. Yes. And so they are, this is basically these really rich folk, what they're doing is they're taking massive advantage of severely like low cost of living yeah and that's low, what they're doing low employment opportunities yeah so those places will never grow or advance or move anywhere because people are just trying to survive and they're taking advantage of that to make a bit of profit for themselves so oh, they're cunts is yeah. what i'm trying to say yes they are they are basically locking up people into 
economically not productive activities. Like, yeah, I, nothing gets produced. You just spend money on your internet connection, your mobile phone tariffs, and all that kind of shit. That you're oh, we're for getting it. we're getting into an angry lefty podcast here. Any moment we'll start going on about property. You know, just, after all, property's not productive. I, Why would you ever want in a country to well, have money locked up in property? I'm property's never going to produce any economic value. I'm just saying, fuck. It's just landlords. a bubble, all right? I'm just saying, years, nationalize all the houses. Years, years ago, get out the guillotines. I get there's this thing right from like I the, I understand people. Look Look at all these people who've got really rich off like spending like five quid on Bitcoin and one. It's too yeah. late. It's too late. It's too late. Years ago, right? I remember getting quite annoyed at this because I I want to say in like a very long time, like when Bitcoin was first around, I went, "What's this then?" And I, you know what? I bought five pounds worth of Bitcoin in like the super early days. And I went, "Oh, I can't do anything with this, and it's worthless." Then I forgot about it. Oh no! And now you're a fucking billionaire. No, but that's the thing. <laughs> It was on a hard drive, which at some point I wiped because I went, who gives a fuck? And if I hadn't wiped it, I would actually be a millionaire. And you know what? That stings a little bit, but it's I, too yeah, late. I've got, it's <laughs> like when I, I entered that tournament and the fucking, the, the third place, the first place prize was like 25 quid or something to spend in store. It was like, mm. it was a game or Yu-Gi-Oh or something. I used to do loads of tournaments at this place. But third was place- Was this ever actually authenticated? Because that struck me as like something that was created for sharing an internet points down the line. I'm not sure if anyone ever was able to verify that was real. Well, this happened to me. What? I'm telling a story that happened to me, John. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought you were referring to the famously circulated uh, uh, image of a thing. No, this was a really common thing. <laughs> Bitcoin was given out as like third and fourth place prizes a lot of the time in a lot of fucking places that I was in. Okay, I'm, go... not sure whether, did you, I'm not sure whether you fucking grew up in Epcot or something. <laughs> no, but up in the fucking go... Midlands, we did not have fucking Bitcoin doing it, the rounds, that, routinely being handed out thing. on street corners for, like, you know, if you came third things. in your fucking hover car race. <laughs> Like, All right, because I grew up I in the middle of to, fucking nowhere, where we were to, fucking crippled by the coal pits closing. I was talking about this the other day. I used to go to an internet cafe that still has the website from when I went there, which I love, and it's 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 got like it's like you can play the latest games like Star Wars Battlefront Two, like the original fucking Star Wars Battlefront Two. And she's like, it's great. And it's like, oh, we got the new World of Warcraft. This is a generational clash here. When Dad was growing up, he was, you know, it was uh, Yu -Gi -Oh, Yu-Gi Oh contest at the nearby internet cafe. When I was growing up, we were just desperately trying to survive the devastation that Thatcher had wrought. Uh, okay, going on my we grew up Thatcher. in different times. Sorry, she's dead, two John. Minute, Get two over it. Two minutes ago, oh. you were complaining about fucking liberals wanting to public make property public, and now you can choose the side, John. Wait, everyone hates Thatcher. Fuck Thatcher. Yeah, fuck Thatcher. Um, don't defy Although she did make Channel 4, which I guess no, is the only this good thing she did. This happens fucking like, I, I used to go to this place all the time. And like, a few of the times, literally like, the third place prize was just Bitcoin, which was like, it was did like, you, you know, a couple of quid worth of Bitcoin. It's not, it was just the thing, because yeah, I was hanging was out with thing. fucking these I've tech nerds that, yeah. in a fucking internet cafe. This was everywhere. Yeah, I've seen that kind and of stuff. And it would stuff always a lot. they would they would have a tournament every weekend in different games and stuff, and I would always enter because it was something nice well, to I'm do. Sorry, for like but I'll post coal mine closing Midlands Town and have a was, fucking was, internet cafe. Wasn't there this period of time where like some dominoes like ages ago, there's like it was like dominoes are accepting crypto now for pizzas and like people are like, Well, that's all I can do with it. I better spend my twenty yeah. Bitcoin on a single pizza and then they're just fucking yeah. kicking themselves now. Yeah. It's that it's that sort of thing. But no, that's happened they used to have a Especially loads. if it was Domino's pizza. Mm, not really pizza. that good. Shit pizza. <gasps> There's a really good one I used to eat meat, but I don't anymore, so their pizzas are shite. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I miss meat. I'm not gonna lie. I know some people are like, I'm vegetarian. Oh, I'll never eat meat again. Every time I see a sausage, I want to kill someone and eat it. <laughs> I just I'm I I miss meat. I love meat, but I don't want to eat it because it made an animal sad. Such a it's a, this this life of us is a real piece of shit sometimes. Just saying. If you had like your own happy chickens outdoor, would you be okay with that? I'd eat their eggs. Chickens. You had your own chickens and you knew they were happy because you'd taken care of them. I'd eat their eggs happily, but I would not kill the chi I would not eat the chickens because they die of old age or disease. Mm. I wouldn't kill them. I wouldn't slaughter them. They don't deserve that. But I'd eat their eggs. I could eat their eggs, but I don't eat eggs. I fuck it. Don't eat eggs because I I was like I don't want to be. I don't know where I've gone with this. Fuck it. But I was like, I don't want to be a fucking vegan. I'll just do vegetarian because I don't eat meat. And then I was like, okay, I'm now lactose intolerant. Thanks, Ashens. So I can't have dairy. And then I was, I looked up how like fucking, I was like, eggs are fine. It's just there's chickens. If you buy eggs that are like from places where they can roam and they get regular back massages and stuff like that, you know, 
fuck it, they'll be good eggs. And then I find out that even those fucking places basically get all the chicks and they're like, oh, that's a boy chick, put it yeah. in the shredder. And I'm like, wait, what? Well, I, no. I and I'm like, even... chicks are literally the most fucking adorable creature on this fucking planet. And you shred them in an industrial shredder. You shred babies so we can eat fucking eggs. I'm not eating fucking eggs anymore. By the way, related now, I'm right now eating non-vegan chocolates. Nice. Surely. Not... Because a PR company sent them. <laughs> whoa, whoa, did they not send them to me? Well, no, because all, everything comes to me. <laughs> that was house, fast. Like, we only just started this conversation and within minutes, the, the box is a bad <laughs> like, Please, please stop talking about the chicken everything shredding. Everything comes to mind, right. And I, you know, I will say, we will send you chocolate if you just stop talking <laughs> you, about the small amount of chicks we shred on an annual basis. You can't eat dairy chocolate and Rebecca won't, so fuck it, I'm eating them. <laughs> I'm vegan, I'm but fuck it. How many chicks are shredded? Please, no pictures. Oh, here's pictures, the fucking pictures, liberal pictures. coming out. Oh, here he is. In the United States, 300 million male chicks are culled every year. You know, I got mocked when I was 12 for doing this shit. But, oh, here he is. Here's time. <laughs> I didn't mock you when you were 12. I didn't know you when you were 12. The In the United people, Kingdom, oh. 30 to 40 million male chicks are culled annually. 30 to 40 million birds are just fucking thrown away. Living things are thrown away so we can have a fucking omelette. Sorry, I can, I can just hear John in the background you know. very, very happily eating, <laughs> very yeah. eating a breakfast just, burrito. Just, sorry, I just went to go up myself an omelette because I missed anything. <laughs> they're fucking delicious, aren't they? they I love John, it when John. there's also bits of pig in the omelette. John, they're fucking incredible, mate. They taste amazing. I ain't gonna lie. I love it. So many vegans are like, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm there going, you're all fucking idiots. It tastes amazing. All right, I'm going to have myself some egg. I'm going to have three different bits of pig in it. It's all right. I'm very and much... I'm gonna, I'm gonna, and, and I'm also going to have some tomato that was genetically engineered to have feelings. So it felt <laughs> fear as it was being picked off the vine. Oh, Just no. fuck it. In for a penny, in for a pound. I'm having genetically engineered terrified tomatoes. It makes them slightly sweeter. Oh. Crying breakfast cereals, John. <laughs> Crying breakfast cereals. Yeah. Crying Breakfast Friends is a Steven Universe TV oh, show. That's what I'm thinking of. I'm thinking of Crying Breakfast yep. Friends. That's what I'm thinking of. There were some little mushrooms by the side that when I was cutting them up, I took them outside to show them to the other mushrooms. Crying Breakfast <laughs> Friends has a crying a, a crying apple, a crying cart of milk, which, well, you know, I feel appropriate. A crying I have pear, a Crying Breakfast Friends t-shirt. A I'm crying cool. waffle. And last but not least, a crying croissant. I do like, because that's a... That's, so for those of you who haven't seen Steven Universe, which is the greatest TV show oh, for kids so ever good. made. Uh, it's great for adults as well. It's, it legitimately it's, has the best sci-fi world building. It's insane. Incredible. Yeah. It's so good. You should totally watch it. The, because it's a show about feelings and talking about feelings and stuff, like a lot of modern kids TV show is, one of the, the TV shows within the universe is called Crying Breakfast Friends. And it's literally just a lot of crying breakfast foods all talking about their feelings. And any time any adults watching it, they're like, I don't understand this Who show. wants to watch a show about figs crying all the time? And Steven goes, oh, I do. <laughs> it's just great. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. So how much of that will, that will put me off eating them? Though? I, I tell you, the one thing that would put me off a uh, breakfast product would be if every time you were to drink milk, the milk were to produce the noise of a cow that's getting a bit into being milk. Like no. suspiciously so, like a slightly aroused cow. That I think that will put me off the milk. So you just have to be sexually challenged to not want to eat something. <laughs> I feel like that would be more effective than than okay. the than the rest of it. Yes. Then knowing that the animal suffered, you rather you would find it more <laughs> offensive to you that the animal was having a good time that it was killed. Ah, for you. Sorry, you for would some reason, rather. Yes, I think so. Does, yes. um, the, the you would rather. <laughs> sorry, but yes. <laughs> you would rather have something suffer than experience joy <laughs> when you eat its thing. Look, right. Well, well done. When you put it like that, you make me sound like a monster. You but are yes. a fucking <laughs> Look, all the crying breakfast friends have actual names. Right, they have a thing. Oh Sad apple, sniffling croissant, crying pear, spilled milk, glum oh. glass, sad waffle, crying egg, weeping <laughs> egg cup, pining grapefruit, sad spoon. This is an excessively large cast. And boring bacon, the saddest of the foods. <laughs> <laughs> it must be the Why saddest. Why is the bacon sadder than the rest of it? Because well, that's the is, only one. Is there a canonical in universe? I mean, that makes reason? sense. It's the only one that came from a, a you know, an actual live animal. <laughs> That's yeah, the only one's true. a bit of corpse, you know? <laughs> the rest of I them... Do, are... See, 
I, it's weird, like, the spiral into fucking veganism. I would probably still drink milk. Um, but if fucking ash. But, like, it, it's weird because I, I can tell you where it fucking started. Because it's, it's like everything you, you like. I think um, the mentality of the world is kind of like, ah, who gives a shit? Like, you buy clothes at Primark. Ah, you know, an Ethiopian child made this. Who gives a shit? Like, I, I, you know, it's some, you, you, it's so much of it is just there's so much shit. This in, in in being a consumer, there's so much shit that after all, you kind of just go, oh, I just I can't think about it all because you can't. Uh, there's so much shit. Uh, you no, can't I think about it. Capitalism. All. That. That's I was literally about to say it. where you're where you're going towards is no, I th- uh, no, uh, no, I think it'll consumption to capitalism. Yes. Yeah, that's the thing. But what I I hit a point. And I'll tell you what that fucking point was. It was pate because pate is fucking amazing. Right? And I'm eating some pate one day. I'm like, mm, fucking pate. Look at me eating this pate on a bit of fresh bread. I'm having, I'm a fucking king. I'm having a great time. And then I went, I don't know how they make pate. Let's look it up. And I'm like, oh, you literally torture an animal for its entire life. Like, you fuck it up. Like, and it was just the most horrible thing. And I was like, oh, I can't eat that anymore. And uh, it was about five years ago. And now I, I don't eat meat. Yeah, but this is anything. the thing right there. And this is what makes that fucking Clarkson's Farm bit so frustrating. Yeah. Where he's like crying and it's like, oh, he's having to like deal with it in a direct way that most people don't think about. And then he just makes a joke and walks away. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, because the, prob- the problem is men and they can't be seen to have made a mistake or be weak. The bastards. Yeah, John. John, this you're the like man attack- here. This feels like an attack on John mainly. <laughs> See, I, the thing is, right, I don't mind... Which exact, no, 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 I, I agree with the, 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 the specific types of food that are basically just created by torture, like foie gras. Like, absolutely, yeah. we do not have that in this house. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, but I see, that's the thing, is I don't... I'm not like someone going like, and you have to be like me. Like, this is just how I deal with this shit. Like, mm-hmm. this is the lines that I've fucking drawn. And I'm like, yeah. I, I think... I, especially, like, this generation, I think we're really pushing towards a lot more of this fucking ethical shit. And yep. I, that's really nice. I, it really, it makes me fucking happy. Anytime I buy something vegan and the package isn't recycling, I'm like, what the fuck are you buying? <laughs> it's like, you're, 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 you're supposed to be the good guys. But I just, I like, I don't know. I, I like this sort of this push towards, let's have things that are, you know. In the UK. Nice. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to eat my meat, but I'm going to spend more to make sure the meat had, to the greatest degree possible, a pretty decent life before it was made. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to say that if I didn't do that, and absolutely no one did that, well, I'm sorry, but we don't need several hundred million pigs just snuffling around having a happy life, because if they just wouldn't exist at all if yeah. it weren't for they were going to be eaten eventually. Well, I, so I, I see it as well, a pretty sorry, symbiotic sorry. relationship. Sorry, to be sorry, honest. sorry, sorry. I would fucking love it if there were a hundred million pigs just snuffling around happily. You just walk in, having a dog walk, give me a couple of pigs. That'd be fucking amazing, John. What the pigs fuck are you talking about? So clever. Oh my god. <laughs> also, the brief point, which someone's going to mention in the comments, so let's just briefly acknowledge here: we are talking from a privileged position because we have money and can afford yeah. more ethical I things, can, which a lot of I people can afford can't. to buy Beyond Burgers with my Tesco club card. Five, well, actually, half the time I get them in Tesco, they are two pounds, not five pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You buy them in Tesco, you do not buy the five pound for two burgers. Get fucked. <laughs> um, but the. <laughs> Hey, the McPlant's good, though, at McDonald's. I had one of those. Ooh, that's No, good. you had way more than one. <laughs> shut up, shut, shut up. <laughs> Actually, the day before I did that run when my foot exploded, I ate two McPlant meals. Yeah, and then that, I was so and then sick that and evening, tired. You had another two. <laughs> Which felt, you know what, out of every instance, right, there's many times where you've been tired in your life and I've went... Oh, he's being a bit overdramatic, you know? Oh, he's he's, yeah. he's having... That was the one time... I've ever believed your your kind of like uh, what <laughs> you're kind of complaining fully and like with yeah. no exaggeration because I always as a rule right anything Daniel says I treat as slightly exaggerated no matter what it is even if it's true it's slightly exaggerated he's a writer and he's a comedian and he exaggerates everything you know I ran seventy Not miles everything yeah that's oh, an you, exaggeration um. <laughs> <laughs> and I take everything with a pinch of salt. But that was the one time, like, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough, you're dying. And if anything, it. you actually under underplayed it, which was... A, a yeah, when I'm take. really sick, I'm like, I'm fine. Like, my legs... It's, I'm literally... Tis a flesh wound. Yeah, you're like, you're like falling down the stairs, and me and Rebecca are like, oh, my God, are you okay? And you're like, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> that bone was always sticking out like that. <laughs> yeah, like... Have you taken any drugs? No! I don't need yeah. them! They made me weird. I don't like them. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, no, I, th- I think 
there you have a level of control over the ethical capitalism that you ethically consume. I think we're getting to that point now where you could be like, ah, fuck Nestle. You know, they, they did horrible shit. Kind of fuck Nestle. When it comes to like buying clothes and shit, I just kind of hope Marks and Spencer's is all right. Can, like, I, can I make a brief up. question? I have a brief question. Right. Yeah, go for it. The title of this podcast isn't going to offend another group of people. No. So come on, we've we probably offended no. a lot well, of people saying. so far. <laughs> is this podcast going to be called 911 Volcanoes or SJW Cox? Because we're doing both currently. I don't think anything <laughs> I've I, I done. Think, I think Bush, Bush did volcanoes works quite well. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Volcanoes don't melt steel beams. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I that's, like both of those. That's the <laughs> title. Um, oh, no. <laughs> it's going to have a different title on John's channel I'm telling you that now oh, well no because Matt writes in the background when he sends me the he fucking video Matt, oh, Matt gets to control clever, the title clever that's shit. it John, John's fucking doesn't matter the first month where it didn't have the name in the background John named it himself he gave it a different name and ever since then <laughs> <laughs> I did, so Matt just said, fuck that, you don't get editorial control over I your own content. I asked for content. your opinion and you fuck got whatever, you, you know? <laughs> yeah, anyway, so I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying you should all go be fucking vegetarian shit. It'd be nice, you know, we should all cut down uh-huh. meat eating at least, let's all agree on that. It's probably yeah. best to cut some of your meat down just because, you know, the planet's on just fire. Just a brief point, um, actually, yeah. relating to that, right? British people. Coming up later on the podcast, John tries to describe how guillotines work. <laughs> British people. Qu- Rise up, comrades! <laughs> Why the fuck would you ever buy a non-vegan Greg sausage roll? I don't understand. Because they're cheaper. No, they're the same price. They're cheaper. They're I've, a few, ne- they're I've never tried it. Any, I've, I've, I thought they're 10 I don't cheaper. think I've tried a Greg sausage roll or a Greg's no, vegan No, they're both the same roll. price now. Are they? Oh, cool. The vegan yeah. sauce rolls are incredible. You don't go out. I understand. But they're both... Okay, what's the difference between the, say, the uh, content? Like, do you get more protein no, or no, something no, out of no, one versus they have the, the other? S- Excluding taste. No, they, they have, they're the same price. They have almost exactly the same amount of calories. They taste the same. I prefer the... the it's less greasy, the vegan one. Yeah. Uh, you get it. There's a nicer. Uh, there's none of that really horrible, greasy aftertaste. I much prefer the vegan one. I think it's nicer. Like, the, the meat one has a little bit more calories in, like 12. From what Dan's saying, it sounds like maybe it's a bit moister. They have a bit more. They have more fat. I don't know. They have a little bit Ooh, more fat. Yeah. Um, And actually, the vegan one has more protein. Yeah. Vegans. And actually, <laughs> and actually, interestingly, the yeah, but like I don't know, as as a long term meat eater, I feel like you can kind of taste the suffering, and I need that, otherwise I can't get <laughs> the, the meat one has soy and milk in. Steady on Clarkson. <laughs> but let's say they're the same fucking price, right? The vegan one's got more fucking protein in. They have the same macro. Buy the fucking vegan one. I have a distinct memory from a couple, like a couple of years ago, of meeting my mum, and she went, "Oh, I got to Greg's, and I got you a vegan sausage roll, and I got myself a normal sausage roll." And I went. Why? Why not just get two vegan ones? You went, I don't know. I'm like, no. Nah. <laughs> well, I mean, Burger King, their Leicester Square one went all vegan, didn't it? They, yeah. they changed it to just be serving vegan shit. And people got very angry because, as you well know, there is no other place to buy no, food in Leicester Square. So basically, <laughs> they were being forced you know why they've done to that, buy though? vegan because stuff. Burger King, A, they've committed to go, I think, at least 60% plant based for their entire menu by 2030, or some 80%, something really high. Yeah. But also, something Burger King has their flame, their plant based Whopper, which yeah. is notably not vegan because they only. Every Burger King uses a flame grill, and they only have one of them. And they cook it on the same grill, yeah. Yeah, so them having the plant-based one less the square, because that grill's not being used for meat things, that plant-based burger can actually be vegan in that brand when it's not yeah. anywhere else. But that's one of the big reasons they would do that, because unlike McDonald's, yeah. where they have separate grills, Burger King specifically have a flame grill, which is a big, expensive thing. Okay, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Help me out here. Mm-hmm. If, if your thing is you just do not wish for an animal, you, you don't have, like, say, a religious... Mm reason that beef may not touch your lips mm. so this is purely a case of i do not want my consumption choices mm. to lead to the death of an animal then why does it matter no that's that's that that it's it's on the no, same grill like if you have say a religious reason that you cannot have a certain animal in your mouth at all or and why i don't face, think I you need a religious that. reason but why does why just for ethical no, vegan for, for, consumption for a, would that well, matter because I, I find it horrible like this was a, this a bit of this was once an animal i find that like legitimately for a lot of things right it's, it's kind a, of upsetting genuinely right that, that sort of cross-contamination thing because i used to i remember um years and years and years ago um mcdonald's when they started doing mozzarella sticks because i've been vegetarian for what like 15 years now and 
there was nothing vegetarian. McDonald's started doing mozzarella sticks. This was like one of the few things that you could get anywhere that was vegetarian. But it wasn't vegetarian, technically, because they cooked it in the same fryer as they would cook other fried goods. And I sort of just dealt with that because it doesn't taste like meat. It's got no meat in. But they, they couldn't say it was vegetarian because there's possible cause. It's the same with the plant grilled whopper. And I think the plant grilled, the plant whopper, they always mark it as a, this is good if you're trying to do flexitarianism or if you don't really care. But because it's not completely separate, it's not technically 100% vegan, but it is in practice. But I care, I don't like, I don't want meat juice on my not meat, my not meat boy. Yeah. But for some people, I they don't, don't care. Me. And that's fine. Yeah, I, I'd rather them have mean, it. Not your mum. But here's the thing, right? So there's a if you go to like a Costa or something, they'll ask you if something if you say are you if you order a, a, a like coconut milk and something, they'll say is it a uh, choice or is it allergies? Preference or allergies. And if you yeah. say yeah, if they say if you say allergies, they've got to fucking clean everything down. Yeah. So I love saying that. It's not actually. I'm technically I'm allergic to dairy, but you know you love saying it. I'm like, yeah, fucking get some work, bitch. No, I don't. Do that. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't uh, drink. I eat, I eat their vegan sandwiches. They're very nice. But that's it's, it's so that's kind of it, there's definitely an allergy sort of thing because some people have meat allergies. So you've got to be careful about well, that. Just... Also, I mean, when Burger King first launched their plant-based Whopper, mm. they put just normal mayonnaise in it. Yeah, but so now it, it uses, even... now it uses vegan. vegan mayo, which is interesting. Oh, vegan mayo is the shit. But they, um, there's, mayo. like, some uh, Starbucks, right? They, um, because I used to, years and years ago, I used to get, uh, like, caramel frappuccinos, which is just this big, sugary, milky, very mm. coffee-y. It's just, uh. like, all the sugar and caffeine you could ever want, ever. Um, and I haven't really got them in ages, and I would have got one a couple of months ago. I got an oat milk one and they were very good. They were like, hey, would you like cream on it? I and mean, we have a plant-based one if you prefer that over the normal one because they don't assume you're vegan, but they do offer you the choice. Just It's like the preference or... And they were like, oh, we have a vegan caramel drizzle if you prefer that, you know? And I just, that... I don't know, that that consciousness and everything is really nice to see. Yeah, like, everywhere. I think you're definitely twisted that way. I think, it, like, even minor steps and stuff, like, people do. Like, I, like even John's got his, like, I'm not eating this shit because the animal was basically tortured for it. Like, I, everyone's yeah, got... I want, I want my eggs to come from happy hens. I want my meat yeah. to come from animals who led a decent life. They got to have a nice little wander around outside. Uh, there'll be certain, you know, there's certain things which only exist because you basically stuff an animal full of so much to feed that it suffers its entire life to generate foie gras or whatever. And I don't do like that, you know. Oh, I want my fish to be uh, properly... Actually, that's sustainability rather than yeah. uh, ethics. Uh, I want my fish to be caught in such a way as it's not well, going to be fish stocks, like is... line courts, not trailer court. I'd say, but that's a, yeah. that's a sustainability issue. I definitely think that's a, a, an ethical thing. Wanting the planet to be sustainable is an ethical choice. You don't mm. have to make it. Okay, ethics in the sense of the suffering of yeah, the no, fish. I, I don't know whether a fish suffers... More or less because it's got a hook through its cheek as if it was caught in a massive ass net with all its friends. I mean, probably if I had to choose one of them two, I'd want to be like tight. Actually, I mean, either way, you're suffocating not Matt, to death. But so like, like you know. if Matt wasn't there, me and the rest of my friends <laughs> being caught in a big net and dying that way would probably be a good way to go. As long as, long as Matt's not there. I don't want to be like pressed up against If you ever Matt. in, I think it's Jackass wow. too. Steve-O, Steve-O puts a fish hook through his mouth. Oh, no. And then, and then... Uh, and then they hook, they fish for uh, sharks with him. You know, that was it. Mm. That was, Dad and Rebecca were stressed after the whole incident. They were like, you know what we're going to do? We're going to watch Jackass. And we're going to watch Steve-O put a <laughs> fucking fish hook through his cheek. I like Jackass. I know. I'm just <laughs> like, you're both like, oh, we need to relax. Let's watch people talk to themselves. <laughs> ah, but they consented to suffering yeah, you know, I like Jackass. I just, it's just interesting. <laughs> Yeah. The, the trick is, we've got. I think this is probably the. If, if pigs ever like achieve sentience, the big thing they're going to have to do is make sure we don't realise. I mean, because otherwise, I wanna... all of a sudden we've got the, the vegetarians got a fucking loophole. So pigs, because then some pigs can consent to being uh, well, cold. Pigs are smarter than dogs. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's their intelligence level. That was another one that made me go, wait, what the fuck? I thought these were idiots. Like a chicken's a fucking imbecile. But like mm-hmm. a, a a pig, like you're learning just how fucking smart and clever they are. You're like, why am I killing this thing for? Fun? I just did probably because it's delicious. It, John, it's fucking yeah. incredible. <laughs> you get oh, God, I mean, well, in that when we get the summer and it's barbecue season, oh, I'm like, I want to kill everybody in this fucking neighborhood. You know what? Right so I I, I, I wish I had that because I just. I don't ever get excited for fake meat because I never ate meat. I've never eaten beef in my life. I've never even That's eaten weird. the first time I tried a beef burgery type thing was that yours dan it was, was a beyond burger i've never eaten beef 
So good. I've never so eaten uh, of the only meat I've ever eaten is like maybe little some bits oh, of chicken and maybe ham. Do you need just to name animals no. that you could eat? That's it. I've, I've, eaten, I've never eaten fish. I've literally. So my my baseline is I don't have that. So what did you have when you were a child before you were too young to make your own? Choices. Oh no, I I was fussy. I didn't like meat anyway. <laughs> well, as oh, I how did you survive to like the age where you could make these choices? Uh, barely. No, but interestingly, my my granddad when he was vegetarian since the age of ten, and he was born in like nineteen fifteen. Which fuck me, oh, like yeah. yeah, I know, right? Jeez, he saw he saw a cow. I, I feel like that's one of those. But was that a choice or was that the British fucking emotion? No, no, he he was well, my on my on my on my English side. Um, he saw a cow get slaughtered at Liverpool docks, and he he it put him off for, for life, and he never ate meat again because he thought it was cruel. And that I mean, could doing that in the <laughs> then at some commitment, fuck me. <laughs> I found it odd yeah. enough in the fucking 21st century. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, I, I, we if you go, like, vegan now, like, what I love most about so it is easy, every man. single fucking time you go to the shop, you are going to find new shit. Yeah, even and at I little love shops, it in new shit. Little Sainsbury's, Little Tesco's yeah. still have loads of vegan stuff now, which they never the used The amount to. of just new shit that you can have. Like, oh, what the fuck's this? It's like, because yesterday I had, a, I had, like, this beef thing. It was awful, but I love trying new shit. <laughs> if you could afford it, anyone listening, and you're in the UK, the vegan kind vegan boxes are a good shout because you get to try a lot of vegan stuff. And I find about th- yeah. 50% of the stuff in those boxes is shit. <laughs> but half the point oh, is to find you're really, out what you're, you're really like. selling it. No, no, no. no there's no, this no. really expensive box. It's not that expensive. Most of it's awful. It's a, no, it's no, a no. tester box more than anything. The crisps that came with the most recent box. Oh, the paprika crisps. I mean, they were amazing. good. Yeah, amazing. Came with lots of vegan chocolates. A, they taught me the love of vegan haggis crisps that they sell. Oh god, they're amazing. I eat a lot of them. I'm fat. <laughs> well, I did lose ten kilos when I was sick in oh, the space the of hell? five days. They're eight pounds. They're eight pounds a month, and you get snacks. Sometimes you get little. Little bits of products and other stuff in there. They're good. And it's a good way if you want to try some vegan stuff and you have the money. Yeah, to it's all snacky months. things. You're not going to get like meats or fucking tofu or No, shit. it's just little things to try. Little drinky things, little snacky things. And I say, some are shit, but that's the whole, that's the lucky dip of, of, of doing it's vegan stuff. It's where I discovered my lo- my absolute fucking love of, I can't what fucking company it was. Uh, oh, fuck. What company was it? I can't remember. Um, they did these, and they don't do them anymore. They might be doing them now, actually, because it's Easter again. They did these like fucking. Uh, hot cross bun chocolatey things and honest to god they're the nicest thing I've ever had in my entire life I want them all day every day in my mouth I could eat a million of them I'm so hungry right now I need to go make a sausage sandwich after this (laughs) (laughs) no when when I'm at your house I have a lot more vegan meat than I normally do (laughs) yeah I mean the thing is right because I learned how to cook and stuff all I do is substitute in the vegan shit now I don't change anything else a lot of it you can easily substitute in, can't you? Like, especially just... When yeah, it's like especially, like, thing. oat milks replace milk for stuff like lasagnas and if you're cooking your sauces and stuff. And, um, you know, there's a thousand different types of uh, meats and... Oh, God, I got a... Violife, minces. Violife do a fat block, which is just, like, an actual standard, like, block of butter. Like, the standard Ooh, one you nice. just get in a normal shop. But because it's not a spread, it's actually just, like, a hard butter, like, normal. It acts exactly like normal butter, unlike, like, the oily, okay. spready stuff. It's so... It tastes exactly like normal butter as well. And you can use it in cooking in exactly the same way. It's amazing. I like the cheese. I like the violet cheesy mm. things. They're fucking... It, it doesn't taste like cheese. cheese, but it's amazing. It's probably a heart cheese taste like cheese. so fucking hungry now. Um, hi, John. By the way, hi. You still here? Eggs are hard to replace. Uh, so I, 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 went, I went to go and um, just, you know, slaughter several more pigs. <laughs> Do you think you could? Do you think you could actually slaughter an, an animal? Absolutely not, no. I, I am absolutely... <laughs> like, you know, I'm, I'm no, in no way going to kind of... Like, because I've literally discussed this with Claire, because I was like, could we maybe, now we've got a bit of back garden, could we maybe consider getting chickens and shit? And like, you know, we could have, uh, we could have eggs, and when, you know, they've lived a happy life, we could have meat. And like, Claire was like, I could not kill the chicken. Could you kill the chicken? I, like, I definitely couldn't kill the chicken. <laughs> what? So we we that that we instead we we'd cry and be sad when the chicken died of natural causes, and we'd like flipping bury well, it. Well, that's the thing, yeah. isn't it? Uh-huh. I think most people are. Definitely Most not. Most people are only I comfortable with it because of the detachedness. Yeah, it's the detachedness that makes it okay. Well, not okay, but it's the yeah. detachedness. Like, makes... I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, yes, I am, in fact, a, whatever the Greek letter male I'm supposed to be pretending to be. <laughs> I, I, in fact, if the apocalypse happened tomorrow, would thrive by virtue of I, I could kill this. Uh, I, I could hunt down an elephant and fucking 
shiver and then, then we would eat for days I have, I have debated no fuck that I can't do I, that I, no, I, I, did a th- like... I did a thought experiment with a couple of times the idea of, you know if again, everything, went to, everything went to pot right I, I just would die because yeah. I, I, if I couldn't have a hot shower every day I would just kill myself well yeah but like even even just like food I'm like everything I eat requires like 70 ingredients you know all the vegan meat stuff so like there's like 70 different things just like smushed together you know I'm like, no yeah. fennel, fuck this, jumps out of the window. And even simple stuff, you know, you know, like fucking wheat. All oh, the wheat's gone, it's all in fucking Ukraine, isn't it? All the wheat is all made by Ukraine and Russia. Fuck it, you know, like... What I mean, I UK eat make? We used to make Move steel, on. Daniel! Did we? Oh, we used God, to make bye. steel. We used to make steel. And now we have a banking industry in London, mm. for some reason. Mm. I don't know why. I don't know why that's what we do. See a... you on the barricades, comrades! <laughs> <laughs> As I say, yeah, this has become a really fucking liberal... Oh, the masks are off, innit? We're the opposite of that, was it? This Dominion guy. Out, this is... Oh, God. What's that, go what well. that guy? The Ura- It's that Roman soldier fighting game. The gladiator game. What? Dominion? Dominion? Oh, yeah. oh, Domino. Oh, Domino, oh, that one. See the other one he posted? Jeez, he posted the second one? Did he? He's still going. Oh, Jesus. Good. Don't, don't just the don't. Second basically, he's, he's gone some, off the deep end. Somebody who's just decided to put lunacy uh, and no, bullshit the first in one, their patch notes. The first one was like anti-mask. The second one went yeah. super, super anti-trans. Of course like, it is. Wow, it's always like one of these things leads to the other. Legit- and these are yeah. patch notes for the game, by the way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'd like to point out that on the uh, uh, the subreddit not too long ago, people were like, oh, you should get rid of these videos. Not checking the fact that we already had got rid of those videos like a month yeah, before. Yeah, I, I had to I had to make that comment because everyone's like, no, we should get rid of them. And we were like, no, they shouldn't. And it's like, none of you have checked. Just search They're it. Gone. Search I actually it. got the, the quote here. This is why this is what I sent to Matt on uh, the like the 9th or 10th of March. I put, wang these two videos private, could you? Dev just came out as a massive twat. Yes. And I unlisted them. Yep. Yeah. They're yeah, unlisted. That's, uh, they're unlisted. We get we get rid of things. I go for the policy so, of unlisting unless because you know if you like the video because you should. I think if you like the video, you should still be able to watch and enjoy the video. However, it's not acting. As we promotion. don't advertise it to new people. Yeah. No, but I I I think as always, if it's ever used for anything untoward, it's just going to go private immediately. Um, yeah. Is the attitude. There's two Dominion videos. There's what? There's two. There's, 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 there's our one, the three of us, isn't there? We did a podcast one, didn't we? Yeah. And, uh, John really liked that game. Yeah. The poor what? bastard. We did a... Um, did we? Yeah, years ago. Remember when we started doing the gaming podcast where we were doing like a... Were we, we were doing it live? It. Were we doing it live? I think so. We did a period where we started playing a game instead of podcast. Did Emma turn up for one of them. I genuinely don't remember. It's it's a, it's a weird thing. We've been doing this for way too fucking long. Are you sure you haven't invented this? No, we did. Oh shit! I'll did. tell you what. I went on um. I I, ra- I finished my stream yesterday and I raided um uh, Small Lamp, who's uh I really I've really started enjoying his videos. He does sort of like um weird runs in mostly Pokemon and Mario Odyssey games. Stuff like, mm-hmm. what happens if every trainer only has level 100 Pokemon? And then we'll beat yeah. the game under those circumstances. Yeah, I've seen some of those lads before. They're interesting. Yeah, and what if you only could catch shiny? So he had to restart the game over a thousand times before his first starter Pokemon was a shiny. Lol. And, and he ended up resetting the game 16,000 times to just try and get shinies. <laughs> to try and win anything. Um, but I, I raided him, and he sort of he recognised my name as as he do because he's you know I've been out there for a while, and he was like oh I, I and he kind of looked down and was like oh I think I've seen some of your videos before I was like yeah you know I'm a YouTube dinosaur I've been around he's like oh me too I've been here for three years, lol, <laughs> and I, I'm like mm, you yeah, know what I did years. I I I downloaded TikTok the other day, oh right. you fucking out of, spy out of out of pure <laughs> curiosity right and I went on and at one point I went hang on and I searched Nerd Cubed. Mm-hmm. Out of curiosity, there were several. Am I big on the TikToks? There were several TikToks of people being like, "Remember that YouTuber you watched when you were ten? And I'm like, "Oh my f- Jesus! Oh God!" <laughs> and they're like adults, and I'm like, "Oh God, no! Oh dear, no! Oh God!" Yeah. Oh, my channel's God. a tween. It is. <laughs> That's true. It is a tween. I hope you're giving it the 1,800 calories it needs a day. <laughs> I definitely don't. We definitely don't. Yeah. Actually, after this, I gotta go play Lego Star Wars for the first time for the for the, the channel. 
My Ooh. first day back recording today. Well, Jeff, excited. Yeah, very good. All right, show video. Ah, oh, so much to do. So much to do. Yeah. Everything. That's me basically saying, let's wrap it up. We've been talking for two and a half hours. <laughs> so in summary... Uh... <laughs> Who, who haven't we offended today? The left. No, that's everybody. I think the left are all right. We're quite liberal in ways. Long live the revolution, comrades. Good night. Bye. Bye. <laughs>